Parental discretion is advised. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza. The podcasters. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. This is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 470. As we congregate here for the 470th Tuesday in uh, under 10 years with my friends talking some wrestling with a special guest with us, of course, from the uh, uh, lower bowels of Pittsburgh, PA, uh, somewhere where Sidney Crosby is hiding right now. It is a DJ Lunchbox on the Twitter's Papa Lunchbox. Hello, Mr. Potter. <laughs> are, you, are we going to roll with this? Mr. Lunchbox could not be in attendance this evening, so I, Alan Rickman, will be doing the show. I can't see your lips, so this is really creepy. <laughs> what is this show about? <laughs> <laughs> okay, also with us, we'll, we'll hopefully we'll figure out who that is later. Um, also- Alan Rickman! I don't <laughs> Also with us from I'm turning into the monarch. He is, he is. Everything just just degenerates into the monarch at this point. Also the with us from Shannon. The, the monarch was not happy with this raw. Uh, also with us from San Antonio, Texas. He is the uh, or wait, are you in Corpus Christi right now? Currently in Corpus Christi. Currently in Corpus from... Christi, not awaiting the elimination chamber, unfortunately, because he has better yeah. things to do with other professional <laughs> wrestling with Inspire Pro Wrestling. He's Eamon Payton. Eamon, too, please, on the Twitters. Hi, guys. I can't do impressions, <laughs> so I'm not going to even try. <laughs> Good. I'm really, I'm really scared on how that last one turned out for me. So, Also with us, he's uh, our friend in the mainstream media, also here in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Sorg. What? <laughs> the fuck does that mean? What? Uh, anyways, always also with us, he does a great blog, mainstream Matt one tblogspotcom It's Matt Carlin's joining us again. Uh, welcome back. Hello, it's nice to be back, Sorg. It's nice to be the author of the second best blog among the guests here uh, today. But um, good. And I would also like to point out that I've never read a Harry Potter book nor seen a Harry Potter movie, what? so I have no idea what LB was talking about. Oh, oh, yeah, you, we, wow. Yeah, it's too late to Heel start now. Turn. There's even, there's even too many movies for you to really jump into at this point, so, but that's, that's another podcast. And, uh, by the way, the, the guy with probably the, uh, as you mentioned, probably the, the first best blog here, joining us tonight, we got a very special guest. Uh, he's, uh, from the Squared Circle blog at philly.com. You can find it under the sports section there. Vaughn Johnson is joining us on, uh, uh from a very important looking place. Look, he's got TVs behind them. He's got all kinds of stuff going on. He's doing work. He has people walking back and forth uh how you doing vaughn i'm great man i'm here in the offices of philly.com here in uh, center city philadelphia and there's a lot going on we got election night here in the office of uh, mayor mayoral primaries and the Sixers just got the number three pick in the nba draft so there's a lot going on but i'm i'm here for you guys Talk. thank you i appreciate it i appreciate it. now yeah we've been interacting with you a little bit on Wrestling. twitter i know matt's been talking with you too up there uh tell us you know what are you doing uh what are you doing out there in philly well, like I said, right now I'm here in the, in the offices of Philly.com, but uh, usually I'm writing about pro wrestling. I got, like I said, the blog on uh, Philly.com called The Square Circle. Mm-hmm. Uh, just came off a week where I was uh, at three show, three consecutive wrestling shows in three days. Mm-hmm. It could have been four, but I couldn't make the first night of the uh, Ring of Honor New Japan shows here in Philly. But I got to the second night, and I went to both NXT shows, as you see there, scrolling down. So mm-hmm. it's been a busy last you know, week and a half for me, and just today... Uh, with the news of uh, Moose from Ring of Honor getting his new contract. He resigned for a one-year deal with Ring of Honor. I actually got a convers- had a conversation with him and uh, got his thoughts on it and got his thoughts on a bunch of other things, including nice. his, uh, his NFL career and, and uh, his thoughts on football and his, and his undying love of pro wrestling, as we like to call it. Awesome, awesome. We'll be hearing a little bit more about your experience there. But it was a very special day, and we're, we'll be touching on that, too. It is May t- 19th. 
you don't remember what that is, it's a very special day here at the Mayhem Show. Uh, but first, hey, if you want to check out more stuff, we're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We have so many other uh, shows and mini shows and wrap ups and all kinds of fun stuff going on there, including the Indie, Re- Indie Mayhem Show where we do a lot of interviews, uh, including Darren De Niro that's been popping up on Tough Enough uh, over the last couple of weeks uh, in those uh, preview videos videos you've been seeing. Uh, please check that out. Really cool inter- interview with him. He was here in studio. We talked about his uh, amateur wrestling background, all that kinds of stuff there. Guys have been killing it there with the Midweek Wars. I was listening to that yesterday, catching up with it. You guys are... are, are I love that we got somebody to give us the proper names and give us the Midweek Wars and Espanol. I'll never be able to pronounce any of that stuff. Uh, <laughs> but we got the experts in for that kind of stuff. So uh, You can join us here live at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com every Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You can join us in the chat room, hang out with us, uh, contribute to the show, have a lot of fun. We have a, and a lot of people jump in there, about 10 people usually in the chat room. And, uh, and, and, and I understand how a lot of people consume the show generally, and that's really cool. Um, also, please uh, subscribe to us, especially if you're uh, and even if you're using iTunes, if you have it on your computer, uh, hit that subscribe button. Help us out. Help get the word out about the Wrestling Mayhem Show and anything else out there. And if you do listen to other podcasts, please subscribe, rate, and not even just us. Just support podcasting in general and help that thing you dig get the word out there. And also, uh, you can drop us a line. You can communicate with us at the phone number, LB, 412-206-WMS0. I'm making sure you're cool. I'm making sure you don't miss shoot again. Or you can hit us up at that email address. Good times. Good times. Good times. Wait, so, no, we don't have a girl on the show. Uh, I'm afraid. Good times. I'm afraid. I don't want to You're afraid. You don't want to miss fire. I know. Uh, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We have a few emails from tonight. Your thoughts on uh, the week in wrestling. So, uh, oh, and big thanks to our Patreon uh, supporters. Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow, including our friends at TheWrestlingRevolution.com. Go check them out. Supporting the show since day one of the Patreon, practically, as well as... Bo diggity! Woo! Yes, Woo. he pays the dollar per week. <laughs> <laughs> so enthusiastic <laughs> so enthusiastic uh he pays the dollar a week so we say the name the way he wants us to say it on the show so thank you very much for everybody supporting the show the way you are so let's get into it again hold on i need to it's Kane appreciation day it's may 19th you know you remember back in the day and i got something special here for you guys today if you're on video <laughs> oh, but you got the new age Kane. i got mask the new up. age i got the fruit roll up cane mask that i'm gonna put up oh hold on i gotta take my headphones off in order to do this, this this whole and it, it actually kind of works over my glasses too. We were playing with this the other night, so it is Kane Appreciation Day. I didn't get the red lights in the studio like we did last time. It's been a few years since we did th- done this, um, so I think it's a perfect time. Real quick, let's appreciate Kane and everything he does in a suit. Oh God! No, okay, maybe we, not that. Does that have to be suit Kane that we appreciate? Does that? Well, have I mean, you gotta, it, it's got to be something about suit Kane you can appreciate. It would have been less dramatic if I came out dressed as Kane now. Let's be <laughs> honest about it. So I, I mean, you know, he is. We've talked about this conversation. Actually, has been ongoing. It's kind of appropriate because we talk about what is. This looks really weird seeing this in my in the video feed. Um, but <laughs> mainly because it looks like you have no eyeballs. And you're it, it does kind of because it's pushed out because of my glasses. Yeah, you got a little Batman thing going, sort. Of. How's that work? Okay. Uh, anyways, but uh, but no, I, I, I mean, he's been around forever. He's kind of trustworthy. When's the last time you heard Kane get injured? And uh, you're maybe actually now with everything going on in his interaction with Seth Rollins, I think it's been the most intriguing Kane that we've had in probably the last three years to me since since Team Hell No in my eyes. What do you guys think? What? That would be intriguging by uh, way of yeah, I'll agree with not that. being intriguing at all. <laughs> I, I mean, he's more intriguing now because when he wasn't doing this, he wasn't very intriguing at all. So in that sense, I agree. So you, in the end, you appreciate him now. <laughs> on this May 19th. Yeah, yeah. And that's the point of the segment. <laughs> what about you, Matt? You were saying something? Uh, Uh-oh. Kane in the ring was his matches were getting really hard to watch and he was doing Mm -hmm. these very awkward run at you, you pull the top rope down I slowly tumble over the top rope kind of (laughs) moments, but now that he's in a we're catching him in the I'm appreciating Kane 
We caught we caught I'm most of that. I'm hoping he's just he's healed up and he's going to come back and just kick an ass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm what, hoping. What about you, LB? Uh, I appreciate what's going on with Kane. One, because he only tore those suit pants once, <laughs> and that's difficult. That's a feat. And two, because what he's doing now is so different than everything he did in the bulk of his career, the stuff under the mask and the being the monster and having the weird shaved head. And it's such a departure from what he used to do. And I can appreciate anybody who's versatile enough to do a completely different character than where they started. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think, I think for what he is, he's doing a great job. All right. What about you, Eamon? Um, I, and I, and I've been another one that's very outspoken about Kane's uh, performances as of late. But uh, I, I do kind of agree with LB. I do think it is admirable to see somebody pull off so many – just just a lot of characters over the years. Just, you know, you had the more demonic side followed by – he kind of took a bit more of a comedy route of points. And then, you know, the stuff he's doing now, obviously. Uh, and, and for the most part, I mean, I mean he, he held his own. Uh, I, I, I think that Kane – has a place. Uh, I don't know if it's currently in the ring, but uh, I, I do think he does have a place. And and part there's a part of me that does appreciate the longevity that he has had uh, mm-hmm. uh, in professional wrestling in general. Mm-hmm. I, I guess like for me, it's kind of like I appreciate that he's like you know this old and and a big guy that has it completely broken down by now, right? Mm. Um, I mean, you kind of, kind of admire that at least a little bit. My glasses are getting foggy now. Uh, it's very <laughs> hot in this thing. But, uh, but anyways, uh, but, but still, I mean, I think he, he's still a cor- that he's still a cornerstone. And, and yeah, it's not the most interesting thing. Somebody's messaging me. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, but, uh, but still, uh, on this Kane Appreciation Day, we can at least somewhat appreciate Kane. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, Kane we gotta appreciate Kane. He's been around for so long. Mm-hmm. He's been so consistent. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you said, rarely ever gets hurt, gets injured. Uh, he's, he's a good performer, you know, even though sometimes he might not be given the greatest material to work with, but he takes what he's given, he makes the best of it. And uh, he's a good guy. When he's, when he's gone, we're going to miss him a lot because of how talented he really was. And he, like I said, he's been around for such a long time, we kind of forget how good the character was, what now, 15 years ago when he debuted mm-hmm. in 97? I mean, he was he was a monster, literally a monster when he first debuted. And even when he took the mask off him the first time, it's like it reignited the character because he became an even bigger monster. So mm-hmm. he had some very high points. Uh, he's had some kind of weird points. Uh, uh, but, you know, he, and he's you said 2013 with Team Hell No, that was a big run for him. And that was 20 years into his career. So, I mean, Kane is definitely appreciated. We, we Kane. We heart you, Kane. You're a big firing heart <laughs> of yours. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to toss it to Vaughn here to tell me about his three days of Philly wrestling awesomeness that happened here uh, with, with everything uh, as I take this mask off uh, and before I hurt myself. So, or suffer, or suffer, leave it on. Leave it on. I'm, I'm not going to be able to see anything. I have to switch video. I got to do I got to I can't see the chat room, LB. I don't know what's going on. Vaughn. So, don't just. Don't just leave it on. Do the rest of the podcast with a voice box next to your neck and talk. Oh, that would be <laughs> tremendous for audio listeners, wouldn't it? That'd be great. Uh, Vaughn, tell me about your uh, your your awesomeness here. And I, I think, Eamon, I know you you're following Ring of Honor pretty good. You're probably mm-hmm. into a lot of this too about what happened. Uh, so uh, uh, so tell us tell us uh, about your experience here. Well, uh, as you mentioned, and as probably a lot of people know, there were four shows in four days here in Philadelphia the last week. Uh, we had. Uh, it was a War of the Worlds, uh, Ring of Honor, New Japan joint show here in Philly. Those were two wins. Then the next two nights, it was uh, NXT Live, I guess I think they're calling it. Uh, their house shows at the Tower Theater here in Philly. Uh, I was able to make three of the four shows, three consecutive days. And it was a ton of fun. I mean, the Ring of Honor show, I got to see Shinsuke Nakamura in person, which is just an honor. People Seeing people like Shinsuke Nakamura and Tanahashi and Watanabe and Nato, guys who rarely come over to the side of the to the hemisphere to wrestle and you see them it's just it's just an honor and a privilege to see those guys perform in person and in the next two nights you see or i saw uh nxt and it's i mean man that those crowds were so hot for nxt Mm. uh and it's such a a refreshing type of show when you see uh people like enzo and Cass out there and they just they started both shows they opened both shows and just they just made the crowds just red hot i mean they just had the crowd in the palm in their hands 
uh, those guys are going to be instant money when they go up to the main roster to see the, the women, not the Divas necessarily, but the women on NXT uh, get main spots. But they headline the first show and the second show. I think they were the semi-main and, and a great match. They got a standing ovation from the fans. And then, of course, you got you know the big names like Kevin Owens and, and Finn Balor tearing down the house in, in the second show. I mean, like I said, just three great shows, three hot crowds, and it only happens, you know, in a city like Philly because the, each show made money. It wasn't like there was a scarce crowd at one show. All those shows were either sold out or close to sold out, and it's a wow. it's a great atmosphere at all three shows. That's I, I also I also think that it's really cool just from the fact that it's the NXT shows in particular because they were in Philly. Uh, you know, Philly obviously being notoriously a, 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 a uh, hard to impress sometimes wrestling crowd. You got to really, you know, impress them. And it seemed like, especially with the uh, the women main eventing on the uh, on the first night with Charlotte and Sasha Banks, and it seemed to receive very positive reviews from from all that all that were there. Yeah, I mean, I it, I don't think really that many people batted an eye at it because it's just like it's NXT and they're presented in a great light anyway. They're not they don't look out of place in in a semi main event like with, on Raw if. Like last night on Raw, Monday night, where the last match was a Divas match, and everybody was going, oh, you know, the last match was a Divas match. But NXT, that's just like an everyday thing where right. Charlotte, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Bailey, they could be either in the main event or the closing segment. I think the other week they had the contract signing for Sasha Banks and Bailey close the show. So you can have that in NXT, and it's nothing that major. I mean, they kind of made a big deal out of it, but to me, it's not that big of a deal because it's NXT. And... They're, they're big stars down there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's awesome to see that. Definitely. Uh, yeah. So, Vaughn, uh, tell me if there's a uh, is there like a singular performer or was there a singular match that stood out to you over those three days that you're like, oh my gosh, that guy right there or that girl right there? Uh, I don't know if there's a singular person that that really stood out. I mean, everybody's so talented, especially on NXT and even Ring of Honor and the New Japan shows that everybody's really talented. Uh, I mean, those. Good matches all around. I mean, I think the main event between Kevin Owens and uh, two of NXT was really, really good. I thought the Charlotte Sasha Banks match that night one was really good. Uh, I enjoyed the uh, the main event of the Ring of Honor New Japan show the night two where they had uh, I think it was Young Bucks AJ Styles versus uh, the Kingdom and there was uh, Adam Cole's return to Ring of Honor. And that was a pretty hot match. So not not really one thing that stuck out that stuck out. Maybe one thing that stuck out to me was just how hot the crowds were for the. NXT shows. I don't know if it was just the acoustics in there, but those crowds were mm. loud those two nights, especially that first night. They were really loud. Some of the loudest I've ever heard for a wrestling show that had less than 10,000 people. You know, it was just really loud, a real raucous atmosphere, and it was really cool. Did it seem, uh, be, being there uh, those few nights, Did you maybe you didn't see it so much on the NXT uh, dates because there was probably just a lot of people filling in because they added that date after, right? Yeah, I think the second... Maybe I forget which show they added. The second show was the uh, was when they added. The mm-hmm. first show was supposed to be the Thursday show. That was supposed to be the only show, I believe. Mm-hmm. But they added the Friday show after that. So mm-hmm. uh, both crowds are healthy. I don't, you know, I don't know yeah, the yeah. exact attendance figures. I've, I've asked. I haven't gotten them necessarily, but uh, did, they were really good crowds. And, I don't, and I don't know where you were if the crowd was maybe too dense to notice. But did you notice a lot of crossover and fans from the ROH night to your NXT nights? Uh, I'm for sure there was. Mm-hmm. I personally didn't notice. I mean, I'm I'm sure there was. I'm sure there was somebody who went four for four mm-hmm. <laughs> and did all the shows. But uh, you know, I'm I'm like I said, I'm certain there was. I just personally didn't notice it. I I don't know. It was all four crowds were. I, I would I would suffice to say that the NXT crowds were hotter than the Ring of Honor New Japan crowds, which I was surprised by because nice. those Ring of Honor crowds were are, are usually really hot, especially when they're at the 2300 Arena, which is formerly the ECW Arena. Mm-hmm. So whatever show was there, it's going to be a hot show because people are just happy to be at the uh, the old ECW arena. But those NXT crowds were just real hot for those shows. I mean, they were just losing their minds for those shows. How, how long has that been uh, back open? Because I know they were closed for a little bit, right? Yeah, it's been back open since early 2014. They had a soft open mm. in late 2013 with a uh, now defunct promotion called Extreme Rising. Yes. Um, so they had, I think, their second or third show there uh, that night in December 2013. Uh, they've had a, a, a handful of wrestling events since. They have boxing events there now, MMA events. Uh, it's, it's a lot nicer than it was a couple of years ago. Uh, they have they run a lot more events there now. So 
it's a fu- actual functioning building now. It's not like just a wrestling building. They have a lot of stuff going on. They have, I think, they have, they have concerts there. But uh, they've had Chikara's on there, Ring of Honor, CZW, uh, Max Republic is one there. Had a Lucha Libre show last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there was rumors that NXT was going to be there, and it, that didn't come to fruition. But uh, yeah, it's it's, a, it's nice. It's nice again. It's, it looks it's, you know, it's like a brand new building almost. Mm-hmm. I was back there. Um, I think around probably 2009, 2010 for uh, some King of Trios and back when Ring of Honor used to do HD net tapings, and uh, it was really cool to kind of check it. And even then, it, it wasn't half bad. It wasn't happening. And I think at that time, I think both Chikara and CZW maybe were running schools out of there, uh, out of some of that back part. So um, really cool, really cool. Um, anything else? Anything else stick out from the shows uh, this past weekend? I, 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 where do you see NXT going? I, I, after seeing how quick it sold out there and even here in Pittsburgh at Stage AE, I can't see them doing these small venues for much longer with NXT. I think I think they want to kind of keep it that way because it's still developmental. Mm-hmm. Uh, Triple H just had a conference call earlier today, and he was talking about how by possibly next year, uh, they want it to be like a, a touring brand to where they run three shows a week, like the main roster. Yeah. Where they run three shows every week on the weekends. Uh, he kind of wants to, to grow it to that point. And I'm, you know, that could be crazy when you think about it. That's a, that's like a third brand, not, not like a developmental brand, but it's a legit third brand, a third arm of the WWE. Uh, but I think because it's still developmental, I don't know if you want to put them out there in big venues too much because, you know, that's still developmental you still kind of want to take baby steps to some of these steps to some of these people some people are more comfortable in front of big crowds than others but uh it's red hot right now obviously and uh it, it's it's getting to a point where it's not developmental it's its own mm-hmm. entity now mm-hmm. it's like uh, the conversation has been it's like it's like and uh wb made its own ring of honor like within itself yeah. And, uh, it's been, and especially seeing it go head to head with something like a Ring of Honor, like New Japan, that everybody's been uh, going crazy for, especially since Wrestle Kingdom this year. Uh, it's really interesting. They've, they've essentially created their own competition. Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. You <laughs> always talked about, you know, if, if there was competition, you know, when WCW went away, the lack of competition kind of hurt the wrestling business because, like Mick Foley famously said, "How fast can you run when there's no one chasing you?" Mm-hmm. But with NXT inside their own, now it's like. At least for the maybe for the wrestlers, they're like, well, they're killing it down there. Especially the women, they're just you know killing it every night. That you know, getting all these rave reviews and whatnot. So now it's like, you know, like I said, they have their own working brand down there, and maybe it motivates the main roster guys to you know put on better matches. Awesome. We'll be keeping on hey, that. Oh, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, I was just gonna ask Vaughn to mention one more thing because you got to interview a few guys. You interviewed. Um, you interviewed Bailey, you interviewed Jay Lethal, and you got to talk to William Regal. And yeah. you talked, it really, really interesting, you talked to him about um, his job as a talent scout. Can you uh, touch on that just a little bit? Yeah, because I was, I was very interested in that. It was kind of an impromptu interview, so I didn't really have time to prepare for the interview, but it's, it's really interesting because, you know, how does that work? You know, I, I follow football a lot, and if you follow college football, you know that, you know, recruiters go out and they, visit high schools, they can follow stats, they can look at film and say, okay, this is a guy we want, but how does that work in wrestling? Because there's no real set criteria in how that works. There's no stats you can look at. There's n- none of that exists. It's a real subjective business. So, you know, I asked them, I was like, how does that work? What is that process? How do you get to know these guys? How do you find out who, where these guys are, who these guys, you know, where these guys are from? There's no max preps, you know, for, for wrestling, you know? <laughs> it doesn't exist. So, and he's pretty much, you know, said that you, know, you can read the um, fan script on Philly.com is that you know, he has connects all over the world. You know, people he just he just knows and they phone him up, you know, tell him about certain people. Hey, keep an eye on this guy. Keep an eye on that person. And uh, he does. You know, and he, he goes to different shows all over the world and recruits and not just wrestling shows, but just different, you know, athletic things and scouts, athletes, scouts, talent. And he said there's no real strict criteria. It's just, you know, People might connect with an audience. You might like the way they connect with an audience. You might like the athletic ability of certain people. You might like the fact that they're responsible. Because, like an example, one thing he said that, you know, he gets people every day on Twitter and, and stuff like that to tell him, like, you should hire this guy. You should hire that guy. And he said, you know, you know, I know about this guy, but if you know as much as I do, you probably wouldn't like him because he's not a good guy or is, he's a not a responsible superstar. He doesn't want to do. He, he's not the type of guy that wants to do the interviews at seven o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. on the morning shows and whatnot, the radio shows. So. Uh, you know, just it's just real fascinating to look at how that works. And I'm, you know, I was just interested in 
and what that process was like. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, uh, it will be watching that. And I know I'm, I'll be adding this to my uh, uh, blog roll here in the morning too, uh, Squared Circle. And uh, you can read all those articles and interviews, all kinds of fun stuff over there. Thank you very much. Uh, stick around. We'll, we'll be talking a little bit of Elimination Chamber, a little bit of Raw, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, hey, please take a look. Up. Speaking of wrestling, some, check out some of these guys. that uh, so, well, We have some stuff here from guys that are popping up in NXT, for instance. Uh, Solomon Crow, for instance. And uh, uh, some guy that looks sort of like Sami Zayn, uh, maybe in a Super Indie with a mask a while ago, called El Generico. <laughs> uh, over at PittsburghWrestling.com. Uh, very soon at IndieWrestling.us. We're currently redesigning it. Uh, redesigning it so we can improve that experience for you guys picking up your pro wrestling dvds and digital downloads mostly from the pittsburgh area but we also have some special stuff some uh some best ofs including some some of our favorite names here on the show uh from prime wrestling and now defunct company uh from cleveland and, you know, but that's where guys cut their teeth like johnny gargano that's killing it in uh dragon gate right now uh guys like gregory iron who's uh you know traveling all over the place with zach gowan as the handicap heroes and doing and and and, and wearing a creepy mustache by the way i had to ask about that uh, a, a couple weeks ago uh it, it, and an upcoming release with shima zion currently djz uh somebody we've had recently on the indie mayhem show as well and uh, of course the hardcore legacy we're talking about philly well, hey ecw is the is the known quantity for philadelphia right and uh we have some uh, special stuff from i think it's queens new york uh, actually a, a really cool venue out there had a lot of legends there over the years and we got a uh, hardcore legacy with uh, actually shane douglas himself on commentary uh uh, dubbing over those more recently and with a lot of kind of insight there. So uh, if you want to check those out, PittsburghWrestling.com, including all of our friends at Vicious Outcast Wrestling, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and the International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, you can check out all those re- releases. And, of course, the the, the, the DBI Invitational from Ohio. A uh, new one just happened over this past weekend. We didn't get out there to film it, but we have the first three up there listed as well. And those go to a very good cause, the Solace Foundation in Ohio uh, for uh, drug prevention pro- uh, programs for teens. So. Uh, so please check it out, support the show, support all our friends in indie wrestling. At least the ones worth it, worth supporting, right? Uh, anyways, uh, so let's get into it. Uh, we're all uh, so we kind of had guys. I, you guys recommended a lot of you guys recommended the We Watch Wrestling podcast and the Vince McMahon idea of how Elimination Chamber happened in two weeks is tremendous. I recommend it for everybody. But uh, <laughs> but but uh, somehow an Elimination Chamber. Elimination Chamber Cage got dropped in Eamon's lap out there in Corpus Christi. Uh, uh, have we talked on the show why you're mad? Wait, I think we mentioned it. I, uh, I, we, 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 I, as we mentioned, uh, WWE is always watching. Uh, and there's a certain company that I work for called Inspire Pro Wrestling having a show on the 31st in Austin. Uh, there, what's that website? Uh, that would be InspireProWrestling.com. Check them out uh, at your earliest convenience. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, and it's a fun show. And we got ACH on and, and Ricochet and, and Joey Please, Ryan. Plug and away. Ray and Anti-programming. Plug away. Plug away. <laughs> plug away. Um, but but WWE is like, no, we're going to run a pay-per-view in Corpus Christi, which is about four hours away. But it's still a, a decent enough distance. It's where I'm currently at right now uh, on that same night. And it's going to be the Elimination Chamber. And, yeah, it's it's frustrating on my end. But I, I – I, Conspiracy theories aside, I get it. It's whatever. <laughs> and you were probably like, well, you know, Elimination Chamber for the Intercontinental title, tag team title. So no one will really be that into that. And then they drop yeah, Kevin and, Owens versus John Cena on you. And, yeah. and then they drop Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. Exactly. Yeah, like Good I've never seen WWE. a better car just pulled directly out of their rear end. Like if this was the payback <laughs> card, if this was the payback card, I wouldn't care. Like, like you know, honestly, and payback was pretty good. But mm-hmm. if it was the payback card, I wouldn't really care all that much. To be fair, your show is your share is earlier in. Oh wait, no, it's six o'clock. Oh, that's tough. No, there's not enough time. No, <laughs> there's not enough. No, there's not enough time Texas to do that. Is, Texas is a big state, sort. No, no, and that's that's. Oh, and there's a time lapse there too because of the time zones. Yeah. Too. Oh. For those that for those that are looking about going to the show, the Inspire Pro Wrestling show, the, the Elimination Chamber is on the network. You can watch it later, like, <laughs> or during the main event, you can pull out your phone and watch it then too. You can, but I wouldn't suggest that either. Also, <laughs> also, we're Amen. committing. Amen. We're, it doesn't matter if they bought a ticket. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, hopefully. Um, but, but I would buy a DVD just to see the entire crowd just sitting there like this on their phone while there's a wrestling show going on. In front of hey, them. Two matches here's left. Here's the thing. 
we will guarantee that event will be a spoiler-free zone. There's any, and there's gonna be no spoilers of anything. You don't have to worry. As soon as you get home, watch it. Like, I'm like, waiting. who cares? <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for your main event. You're gonna have uh, Andy Dalton coming out there, just like threatening to spoil uh, Elimination Chamber. Oh, I, I great. I don't, I don't know. I'm just frustrated still. <laughs> hey, hey, man, I was really I, I can't believe you're going no spoilers. I was really hoping you're gonna get your Tony Schiavone moment. At that uh, no, show, no. You, we, well, we all know how that. Turned well, out. on that other channel, uh, our Owens truth just, versus our Cena. Truth, that ain't gonna put any butts in the seats. Our truth just won an Intercontinental Title, so good for him. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually probably work, maybe. But no. you can complain. Um, you are the Tony <laughs> Schiavone. I just realized that. Sadly. Well, you're not the Mac Adamly of Inspire. But anyways, so we have Elimination Chamber. This explosion of uh, interesting stuff going on. Uh, we got two Elimination Chambers with uh, uh, Intercontinental and Tag Team. We're figuring out the logistics of that. I can't wait to see them just squeeze everybody in pods. Uh, oh. but, uh, but still, I mean, those are big pods. Two people can fit in those things. Everybody thinks that everybody's going to be just jammed into those things. It's been you so heard, long. You heard Biggie. You heard Biggie's story. He's too big. <laughs> <laughs> that so, match is going to be so chaotic, though. It's going to be probably really good, but it's going to be 12 people in that in that chamber oh, at, at some point fighting each other. That's going to be just a big cluster, but it's probably going to be good. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it regardless. Mm -hmm. Whoever did we ever think that we would see like the, the the people that are in the tag title elimination chamber? Do we ever expect them like in our wildest dreams for them to be in an elimination chamber? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, and and you say that like oh, it won't be it won't be too bad. Well, yeah, sure. If you're like the first guy out of the pod, five minutes in a pod with another person, not so bad. Twenty minutes in a pod with the same person. Um, I don't know. It depends on the guy. I don't know. As long as they don't stuff the entire new day into one pod. Oh please! They have to. Tough. They have to. Would they have yeah. to? Because that will be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> just, just be just. You know, the, they're not just allowed to have three people, but that point. Yeah, yeah. 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 Always, like, he's in there, all jammed in, looking angry. <laughs> It'd be amazing. <laughs> like Kobe, all, uh, only if they if they also put the bull in with the matadors. <laughs> Didn't they? Uh, didn't they? Well, they then they got to put Natty in the pod with Cesaro and Kid too. Why not? Free so now we got a three in a pod now. There's no roles. There's no real I'm roles. On, I'm on board. And 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 the Ascension has to wear their giant shoulder pads while well yes. <laughs> <laughs> make everybody as constricted as possible. And, and get and get Bram from TNA to rejoin them and form a trio. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what, what is WWE? Uh, WWE just follow the Lucha Underground route, make trios titles. <laughs> yeah. I, I wow. Uh, so it, it has it is being listed. It's not technically a pay per view. It's not on a, your your standard cable system. So this is an exclusive quote pay per view. It is listed on their site as a pay per view. Uh, they added this out of nowhere. Apparently, Corpus Christi has not been upgraded enough that they can still support the Elimination Chamber structure. Apparently, that's the issue. Why we haven't had it is apparently the new fancy giant scoreboards. Uh, they now don't have the structure to lift that entire thing above the ring uh, that's the word though. that's the word uh and i, I believe that and that's an older arena out there yeah. right amen uh, yeah. not not super old but yeah since i want to say like oh four oh five it's been around okay okay and it sounds like a lot of these a lot of these newer arenas like they got the, the gigantic scoreboards now like the ones in cowboy stadium they're just making smaller versions of that like the one in houston it's like a smaller version of the one they got in at t Stadium, so it's hard to hang a, an elimination, cha elimination chamber from one of those. Mm -hmm. But yeah. No, I'm very, I'm very shocked that they're getting a pay-per-view, so, I mean, uh, to think be about honest it. with you. We haven't been getting, we usually would get Raws, and now we have we barely been getting any like live shows lately. Uh, you, usually it's a lot of house show stuff. Where was Corpus Christi on the grade list a few months ago? When, when that, that, I, don't that, that, I, I don't remember exactly. Uh, I think they're pretty good from, from where I would guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, they 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 seem to be a reliable crowd um, from the times I've been. But yeah, as of late, they, we haven't been getting any like live raws or even like a tape SmackDown or anything like that. It's been a lot of like pay, uh, a lot of house shows. Weren't they there at the beginning of the year? I think it was. Wasn't it like when uh, when Ziggler, Ryback, and uh, who was it? Rowan got fired because they called him like the Corpus Christi Three, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I. 
Because the last time I remember was like the last time I went to a show that was like a uh, like a tape show. Like CM Punk was still with the company. So. <laughs> Okay, actually, but, uh, I just oh, uh, took a quick glance, guys, and Corpus Christi is a B plus. Mm. Okay, I, I can see that. It's a B plus player, so <laughs> good for them. Good enough Daniel for a Bryan B of wrestling towns. You're the Daniel <laughs> Bryan of wrestling towns, and that ain't too bad, Amen. We all yeah, support well. you. We support you. You'll get your WrestleMania moment. <laughs> Corpus Christi WrestleMania. WrestleMania so 33, make it happen. <laughs> did, did I ever tell? Did I ever tell the joke about after? Um, after John Cena made that comment in London about how London should get a WrestleMania, I wish that all of his like pandering, like open challenge promos, should have started with whatever town they were in should get a WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> hey, to come to Washington, you should be getting a WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at Kansas get to the WrestleMania. The, the names oh, yeah. on the ace, the A list, like I've never the like, Hidalgo, Texas. Okay, yeah, Hidalgo is like more like. North Texas. Okay. Isn't that a horse movie? That was the horse movie, actually. So. <laughs> hey, Texas, they name, name stuff after horses, obviously. So. I love, I love a good horse movie. Oh, that's a, that'd be... <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not like this triple crown's going on, LB. You got that triple crown fever. Mm -hmm. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. Preakness! Preakness! <laughs> 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 All right, but also, like I said, we, you mentioned that you know we have Seth Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose. I mean, that how can that not be a classic, right? Uh, and uh, and out of nowhere, did anybody expect Owen Cena to become a thing even after that? Uh, no. Like, like oh, no. They're, maybe they're setting up to do something at SummerSlam. And they're like, nah, see you in two weeks. Um, so is this match for the U.S. title or the NXT title? Because I've heard both. Oh, oh, geez. Kind of silly for the so. NXT title. I mean, what would Cena do with the NXT title? But That's the thing. But, I wouldn't but, care either way. I, I just want to see the match. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I forgot who said Someone big in wrestling said this on Twitter uh, uh, recently, but uh, he said WWE either made the smartest decision right now or they booked themselves in a corner. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be either one of the two. Because I, I do think there's a chance that they, you know, well, we have to make Owens look great, but is he really going to beat John Cena? Like, that's the kind of... It doesn't. It doesn't could happen. It doesn't have to be for either title, and I think Owens can beat John Cena, and everybody comes out a winner. I don't think he will beat John Cena, but I think if, even if he loses outright clean, mm -hmm. you can still make him like a million bucks in the process. It's not impossible. You know, True. I will say if that's the case, WWE must really freaking love Kevin Owens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, no. the, the, for let it alone that six months into him being in the company, he is facing John Cena on a pay-per-view. You know, that's insane. <laughs> uh, officially on the website, it says that there's going to be a non-title match. Okay. So we're just... I, I, just, I, I love it when WWE, like you said, when they book themselves into a corner. Like and, and I think I think I, I assume Owens will have the NXT title when he goes into that pay per view. But well, maybe they're going to pull a surprise on me on Wednesday night. But that is like directly into a corner, and it, it's screaming a non finish. But I really won't care because it'll probably be a pretty entertaining fight, anyways. Well, and, surely. And I, I don't think, like I, I like I said, I don't think even if Kevin Owens loses, if it, it comes after a knockdown drag out fight where he's just you know it's just one great moment after another sometimes people got to lose i mean yeah and that's, that's okay you don't you don't want them to you know lose too much obviously but we've seen before where got new guys come up and they win all their matches and then they run into that brick wall known as john cena look at rusev mm -hmm. uh but then they go down but at least where if he loses to john cena early i guess he can work his way back up and maybe over time get better to the point where he can beat john cena eventually but I don't. Right. I don't see any shame in losing to John Cena. He, at the end of the day, he's still the top guy in the company, and top guys usually win. That's how. That's how it works. Yeah. And also, as, you, as exciting as it is, that initial confrontation between Owens and Cena. I mean, when you look at Cena's recent history working with some of these younger guys, it doesn't always work out either. No, I mean, not at all. Bray Wyatt, <laughs> well, and with with Dean Ambrose, I mean, that was kind of a draw. And even Seth Rollins, that was kind of okay. And, I mean, Russo had to take three straight losses, so but I think you have to be honest, the old, like half worried, half excited. But in fairness, the two times where I think like it's really worked out was against Sammy Dana and Neville. Like, so well, that's that's the thing. This this whole um, United or U.S. title open thing that he's been doing has basically been subtitled. Look how awesome NXT is, <laughs> and this could honestly this could be the culmination of that. Like yeah. the final part of the big NXT 
putting over is Cena putting over the NXT champion. That that is a really good point though, Matt. Like I I, I love that like the people who are on the main roster who are supposed to like get important pushes usually don't do very well in their feuds with Cena, and then the NXT like new people like usually do pretty well. That's a, that's an interesting uh, an interesting conundrum. Well, you got to think about it though. Some of these NXT guys they can really go, and they really have something that people really like about them. Mm-hmm. Not just their wrestling ability, but they just. I don't know. They just they just know what they're doing out there because they've been out there. They've been working for you know Kevin Owens, like he said, 15 years. You know Neville mm-hmm. for a decade. Same thing for a decade. These guys know what they're doing, so they know how to keep themselves over, even in, in defeat. Some other people don't know how to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people on WWE's main roster, they they never had to fend for themselves sometimes on the indies, so they don't necessarily know how to keep themselves over in a loss. So. Do you think that's it here? Because you know the, you we're seeing how far they're pushing Sammy and and especially Owens right out the box. They are two guys that have been around for 15 years, uh, whatever the official number is, and uh, they're not somebody who's three years in trying. You know, say oh you know God bless him, uh, Darren De Niro last last week on the show here. He gets tough enough. He's been in the business. He had his first match, not even a match. He debuted in a beatdown. Uh, in, in August of last year, and he might have an opportunity with WWE. He needs to be molded. Even Logan, Logan Shulo was four years in, maybe, and he we haven't even seen him in the year and a quarter since he's been signed with NXT, right? As uh, I keep forgetting his name there, uh, but we haven't seen him on TV. So, uh, you know, you know, they're seeing these guys come in, the Hideos, the Finn Balors, the, the Owens, and they're like, we're just funneling through NXT because that's where we do. Uh, give them a couple matches, you know. Uh, it, it, I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this, but it's kind of no, like, no, I, like, I like they have that advantage right. over over like Sasha Banks and Charlotte, who are new, right? But are killing it yeah. out there. And I think that um, uh, it's an interesting conundrum because I think that. It, it, like you, I think you mentioned, it's because of their popularity on the independents that they're getting these opportunities. And no offense to the guy, because mm-hmm. I think he gets a lot. Of, I think currently he's getting a bit of a bad rap. If you put Baron Corbin in this open challenge thing, nobody would care. No, he's they young. Wouldn't. He's young, and maybe um, he'll and get better. I don't like him now. And that's extremely unfortunate. Yeah. But, but, you know, like I said, they do have, like you said, Sorg, they do have that advantage of being on the Indies and all but, that. I'm, I'm just super glad that they're mentioning NXT on the shows now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, you, you can't avoid it. I still think I still think there's that corporate thing going on where where even though obviously NXT to us is you should support this, this gets people excited about the network. I still think there's like somebody in some power position on Raw, maybe Vince, but maybe just in general. There's a lot of politics, not just on the wrestling side itself, but the corporate side. They're saying no, we're not going to push this because it makes us look bad. You know, I mean, there's a lot I, of that stuff happening. That was like everything WCW, right? Mm-hmm. I think they've gone. I, I think they're past I, whatever political thing in the back was holding NXT back. I think they're past that point oh, now. I think it's certainly. obvious from how much like it's getting promotion on Raw. They're they're talking nonstop about NXT. Right. right. Uh, Mad Mike in the chat room wants you guys to know that that he loved when Owens pulled the veteran card on Cena. Oh, the best. He thinks that was his favorite part. I loved when he stomped on the U.S. title. <laughs> <laughs> what a just a brilliantly crafted little. Segment. So many little touches just to make Owens just come off just like the most dis- despicable human being. And he definitely did his part of it too. Kind of a, and, uh, kind of a side note. You know, Triple H was talking about he wants to get back to people not having scripted promos. I don't think Cena yeah. does it a lot anymore. I think Cena can be like, hey, go do something, Cena. Go be Cena, right? Uh, make sure you plug yeah. the pay-per-view. Make sure this going put over this dude, whatever it is. Make fun of Heath Slater, uh, but, but do that. <laughs> I, I feel like Owens is definitely that school, and maybe the why he's getting pushed so hard by Triple H is he seems to be like, that's him. Just like, Kevin Owens, go be an asshole and uh, do this <laughs> and that and, and, and everything. And, 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 and puts all those subtleties and subtle subtle bits in there and uh and and it's a return to that and, and that's i think why it feels so visceral you know um i'm very glad that, i'm very glad that's the case because mm-hmm. scripted promos are some of the like worst like stuff you can see like or, when you it's clear they're just reading or or, or bobby and i were having a discussion because he's so mad about ryback because you can tell he's reading off a cue card off camera mm-hmm. and we've had the same thing with of course um um uh, Rowan Reigns himself, right? So I, 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 there's a place for that. It's okay to have some of that, but it's been a crush for far, far too long, and and exciting to see this happening along these lines. Any any last thoughts about Elimination Chamber? Anything cool going on here before we move on to the big question? 
with my with my discretions about the the date of the pay per view aside, um, <laughs> with your personal I, I, discretions about it, <laughs> no, um, I, I mentioned this in the Facebook group. I do like the idea of them doing like uh, we talk about oversaturation of the pay per view market a lot. So I'm not saying like oh add more add like twelve more pay per views, but <laughs> um, I I think it's cool that we have three pay per views: Payback, Elimination Chamber, and Money in the Bank with two weeks of build in between each. Yes. And I think that's going to help the builds a lot more because it allows them to just cut to the chase on, on the shows. And cause there's times where it just feels like they're filling mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like, Oh, these guys so, are going to be. So you're team. saying cool. you're, you're saying versus our, our question before you think, Actually, more th points like this help them. This is this is not really a, to me. This is not a pay per view. To me, this is a Saturday Night's main event. This is that in between thing to push us to the next thing, right? And but there's some yeah. big matches on this. Paper. There is. Oh, absolutely. It's not going to be a lot of you know uh, a, a lot of throwaway stuff like like a Saturday Night's main event was. Why I don't think it, anybody cared when it came back. But um, I, I I look at it like that as in you know. I think they're going to treat it like a pay per view, but you won't be mad because you don't. You know nobody paid sixty dollars for this thing, and I think that tempers even our mind because even though we're paying nine ninety nine month to month for these things, most of us, uh, you're you're still thinking, but somebody's paying sixty dollars and some injustice to it, and because that's <laughs> been our mentality for like twenty years here, right? And it'll right, be developed yeah. into that, and that's what everybody talks about. And it, our, our our argument has been for the ten years of this show: this show is not worth my money for what it is. And now it is worth nine ninety nine at the very yeah, least. I, I do like uh, network exclusive specials. I think that's a cool uh, idea, especially to keep the subscriptions up or to gain some subscriptions. Is to you know have some exclusive content. In ring content, not just uh, superstars, or, and I don't know if even main event is even on the, on the network anymore. But stuff like this at the King of the Ring a couple weeks ago, and now this, I think that's, that stuff is cool. I mean, keep you know, not, maybe not do it every two weeks, but mm -hmm. maybe once every two or three months have a different special. Why not? I I also just think yeah, and, and I, I'm just more inclined to watch the uh, the build up the, of the matches now because you know what the way we used to have it. You know, it was okay. We have four Raws, four Smackdowns to kind of tell this story going into this pay per view, and that's so much time. And and like I said, it, it leaves them available to just do filler stuff that doesn't really matter, and sometimes it just hurts the storylines. Hey, you know, you, oh sorry, go ahead, finish. Oh, I was just saying. Now you have two Raws, two Smackdowns mm -hmm. to tell this story, and that's more than enough time. And I and I think that you know it'll make things more succinct because as of late, the pay-per-views as of late have been pretty good. Just the builds have been terrible. Okay. I, I, I feel. Okay. Okay. A lot of us nodding our heads on that one. I, I think uh, Elimination Chamber is better than, as far as uh, content to get excited about the network, uh, it's a step above, even though I love them, the podcast that they've been doing, uh, as well as the random clip shows like the Vicky Guerrero special, which was great for the time, by the way. But we get like extra stuff like that all the time, and it's like, look what we're doing! It's like, great, you opened up a bunch of stuff from the vault that that Mad Mike made helped you log so all those years ago, and um, <laughs> but we're actually doing something big and something on this scale and the logistics I couldn't even imagine. How did they get to that point to say, oh, we have this house show? Oh, there's the chamber. Oh, this is a place going to do chamber. The elimination chamber. Like that, I wouldn't know that process. And like the logistics to call the extra road team and change everybody's schedule. And, and the people are supposed to go to Greenville, South Carolina. Just, just everybody that goes around planning shows was probably losing their minds for, I want to say, 24 hours before that thing was uh, announced and probably another 48 afterwards. Actually, probably still until this thing happens. So yeah. it, it tells you that there must be a pretty good reason why they've decided to move all these pieces and do this big event down in Corpus Christi at the end of the month. It either means that they want to boost the subscriber numbers because they want to have a good number the next time they announce it to the investors. There's some sort of deadline coming up. There's some sort of milestone that they well, yeah. have to hit. Yeah. And I, they are pushing all the chips in to hit this mark by the end of the month. They want to drag people through. Mm -hmm. I think that Stone Cold podcast is the first day of April. They're trying to turn people over into June. that. June. Uh, and who knows what else they're going to have June. up their sleeve. Hey, what if after – what if following the Owens-Cena match – at Elimination Chamber, 
in a post-match interview, Cena says, you know what? F Kevin Owens. I'm showing up at NXT on Wednesday. That's in the month of April. Mm -hmm. Pay your $9.99 and subscribe. June. 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 It will have a meltdown (laughs) if Cena shows up on NXT. That's right. Oh, he he showed up a long time ago on NXT before it it was like a thing. Back when they were cycling people through. Uh, you're right. There, yeah. is, there is a deadline, Matt. It's midnight on that night, an hour after uh, Elimination Chamber will probably go off the air, that we all have to cancel our free subscriptions to the WWE That's Network true. for the month of May. <laughs> That's the deadline. That's the genius of it. And it's worth w- cr- dusting off the Elimination Chamber and picking Corpus Christi over Greenville, South Carolina. or what, I think I got that right uh, in order to do yep. this thing and, and really make an aim and have a bad Sunday. But anyways, no, he will. It's going to be a very successful show despite their competition because Inspire Pro Wrestling is kick-ass. Inspire Pro Wrestling Talk Dot com. Please check them out. Also, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, sorry, Vaughn, I don't know what the pizza situation is there. Everybody, I, I just talked about gyros when I went out there. Uh, gyros. But, Man, we got cheese steaks. Gyros. Right cheese steaks. Cheese, cheese. What am I thinking? Uh, <laughs> cheese steaks. Oh, I am so sorry. I, I don't mean to insult your your Your, your, your ways life. are so strange in mm. Philadelphia. Oh, the neon <laughs> lights. These cheese I, steaks of what you speak. You, you know what's funny? <laughs> they had an entire angle at, at the second NXT show built around cheese steaks where it was Enzo and Cass. Well, Tyler Breeze, for one, you know, talked bad about cheesesteaks, and then Enzone Cast came out with cheesesteaks in hand. Oh, jeez. And then, uh, what's his name? Bull Dempsey was Tyler Breeze's tag team partner, and they bribed Bull Dempsey the entire match with a cheesesteak. And he would inch over and, and reach his oh. hand out and, and go, wow. oh, maybe just a bite. <laughs> and, and they <laughs> That's the greatest. <laughs> You know, it, 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 I, I made the mistake when I went out to Philly for the first time for King of Trios back in probably 2009. Mm-hmm. I went on the Chikara board and I said, what's the best cheesesteak? I understand I need to try one out. And I just, the, the, the war that started from that comment <laughs> was ridiculous. But I did go, I checked out De- DeLuca's. I got to stand in between those two with the neon lights on the corners facing each other uh, that I can't remember their names. Uh, so it. it's, a, it. it's, a, it's, a, it's a hell of an experience, right? <laughs> but anyways, but we, are, we like our pizza. We are very fortunate here where we have three uh, legendary pizza places here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, and one of them supports this show and the guests that come in here through the night because we do do five shows here on Tuesday nights. It is podcast day after all. And uh, and uh, we would like you to support them if you're in the Pittsburgh area. They're here on in Beachview, uh, the South neighborhood, right along the tracks along the T line in uh, Pittsburgh. There's only well, two T lines. You have a 50 percent chance of finding it. Uh, so, uh, but uh, it's from scratch. It's great stuff. There's important podcasting uh, in Pittsburgh with pizza, and uh, and they have a secondary location if you're coming into town, in and out of it, or maybe you're going to that Coin Up uh, Hall of Fame uh, place that we're checking out this weekend. We're talking to them on AwesomeCast.net this week uh you can stop off at carnegie pa and you can check them out down on main street uh great stuff down there they made a hello kitty pizza for us for for daughter's birthday it was amazing these guys are, are fantastic recognized by the city with a proclamation um all kinds of awards from the local uh, media and uh you should check it out too they rise above again there was some high competition here amongst the three routes over here i won't say anybody else's name uh our friend from new york came in and gave it a big thumbs up and he was right down the block in the bronze from a tremendous slice place uh so check them out slice on broadway.com their pgh underscore slice on the twitters uh also slice on broadway on instagram on facebook follow them today you will leave hungry and uh tell them you heard about them on the mayhem show or any of these fine sorgatron media shows so we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with lb's fantastic phenomenal going to bend our minds big question this is johnny gargano the bees knees the cat's pajamas and the whole shebang not johnny bananas by the way even though i like to eat them and you're watching the wrestling mayhem show Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling Mayhem Show again, still episode 470. I don't know where you went, we're in your podcast player. I don't know how you organize this. Are you editing the show, splitting it up, and then getting lost? Are you putting us in between episodes of uh, Does This Hold Up and the uh, Night Vale? Welcome to Night Vale Stories. I don't know. That's your podcast machine. But right now it's about the big question, and I'm not going to ask any of those more weird questions because I got a big question from DJ Lunchbox. DJ Lunchbox, save me from myself on this podcast. <laughs> I can do that. That was very a very confusing intro, but I uh, it was it worked. I uh, I was uh I listened to everybody talk about NXT and you got you got to worry about the um the network and be getting people to subscribe and stay subscribed and new subscribers and so on and so forth. And I got to thinking about, you know, 
we're all here for a common reason. It's because we all love professional wrestling in one way or another. We're all love it or have loved it in the past. Um, so my big question this week is very simple. If you were to take a person who had not watched professional wrestling in their life, but had, of course, the you know cultural awareness of it, how would you get them into professional wrestling? What would you show them? What would you tell them? Um, how would it go? Wow. Somebody's done, okay. Didn't you do this with a girlfriend a few years ago? Yes. How did that go? It went well. She watched wrestling with me for a long time. What? Uh, well, I'm curious because you, I'll, okay, I'll, you did I'll the experiment. I'll, I mean, I'll you, answer. You have an answer before any of us because you've done this. Um, so. I the first match I ever showed her was uh, Undertaker Shawn Michaels won from WrestleMania, and mm. as time went on, is that that was enough to get a foot in the door and to watch um, Monday Night Raw. And you know, when they see somebody they enjoy, you encourage that. You encourage them to you know pick somebody to root for, whether they win or not, and um, you know encourage them to laugh when it's bad and you know uh, cling to the parts that are good. Um, that's in my experience the most uh, most successful way and then you know after time you expose them to the other things to the other forms of wrestling the you know extreme hardcore wrestling and the the luchadors and the and the more technical aspects and things like that but um that's what worked for me nice i think i think uh, exposing something that doesn't insult their intelligence is gonna is what works i I think a lot of people are innately interested in, in wrestling in some some respects. So I, I've talked to a lot of people like who said they, they used to watch it when they were a kid or something like that. They kind of a lot of it, mm-hmm. but because they're older, they feel as though that some aspects of wrestling assault their intelligence, and they're right, it does. So, for somebody who doesn't watch it, I would try to find something that, like I said, doesn't assault their intelligence. And at, at WrestleMania match you mentioned was a good place to start because that's. I think that's my favorite WrestleMania match ever. And I think that's, I can show, you can show it to anybody. And, and they, if they can't find some entertainment value in that, there's something wrong with it. Mm-hmm. 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 I agree. Uh, I, I have my answer, and I fear that it's going to take the answer of a couple other people on this show. Uh, but uh, my answer would be Lucha Underground because mm. it is the closest thing to, it, it is like an episodic television show. It is like watching. In my opinion, it is like watching a Game of Thrones or a you know some a show similar to that in the sense that you have characters that are uh, easy to follow and and storytelling mixed in with really great wrestling. Uh, I think that good storytelling is what captivates people and and, and forces people to watch from watch more. Um, I don't think a lot of people will. I, there is a connotation, and I don't like saying it, but that you know. Wrestling's fake. Why would you watch dudes fake hit each other when you can watch real people hit each other? And if the reason is because of the story that they tell. Um, and I think that Lucha has the best chance of, of converting people for the fact that it is presented in a style much like a, a, a any other episodic television show. Uh, so it's something that people can get into weekly. Um, and I, I think it could open up opportunities – for people to enjoy other stuff beyond that. Um, I, I think if you, you know, I, I think they have a better, people, casual people have a better chance of watching Lucha Underground weekly than they would have watching Raw weekly. Um, both because Raw's longer, but also because um, there, there's stuff on Raw that, you know, is something they may be interested in, but maybe there's aspects that they wouldn't be. Um, and, and this just tells a fuller narrative, I feel. It doesn't insult your intelligence. That's, that's one thing. And, and that as well, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't make you feel like you're stupid for watching two uh, matadors run out there with a the, the <laughs> bull costume. You know, I, I can't show my friends who don't watch wrestling that. I, I, I feel embarrassed when they come on. It's like, I can't show them this because it's like, what are you watching, dude? Like, what are you spending your time doing? It's like, why are you enjoying this? Yeah. Right. But, but yeah, having something that rewards you from watching the first episode of the show and they bring up something that's on like episode 16 or whatever, right. you know, that's, 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 you know, something that people right. can get into. I feel I would show my friends the shield though. That, that the, the whole <laughs> the shield, because I don't know anybody that couldn't like the shield because they were a badass group and they're three fresh faces. They're not, they're not triple H, they're not undertaker. They're not guys who, who they immediately see and say, 
how old is he and how long has he been wrestling? You know, the three new guys who they, they haven't discovered yet. And then the whole act was just amazing for that with a year and a half, two years that they existed. So that's another thing I would, I would throw in there as well. Definitely. Nice. Yeah, and I would temper that. I, I would watch it, you know, because I, I can think of people that don't like Robert Rodriguez films. And I think, you know, if people don't like that style, you'd want to kind of sidestep Lucha Underground. But it's definitely the best example of that. Like, don't you wish there were just more versions of that just for other genres, right, with different kind of tones to it? And maybe we'll see that as things go here. You know, we have a lot of companies that sounds like in the woodwork are like trying to get TV deals, you know, like Global Force. I'm kind of wondering what that presentation is going to be with Global Force. Will they do anything different? I doubt it, but we'll see. Uh, for me, I, I would, I would probably look at, uh, depending on the situation for, for me, I, I, if somebody wanted to get, get into wrestling, I'd probably take them to a local show, you know, one mm. I know is going to be good. Like one of the ones at core time here with the IWC, or if I know it's going to be a special show with the RWA, you know, not to just any show, you know, I wouldn't want to take them to just a show. And it turns out to be that one that happened down the road that had. 25 people there and a fake doink and 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 you know that was it uh you know because that i feel like that is the thing that's going to turn everybody off of wrestling uh but i think uh seeing that in person you know and seeing people kind of on that level will give them something special also uh, as far as something on tv to say hey go check this out i think nxt kind of for the reasons you say for the shield is really accessible it's exciting there's a story to it it's not goofy ridiculous for the most part once in a while they do something but but it kind of works on on most levels uh and again like like you say it's faces nobody knows for the shield right and uh give people that's a good jumping on point you know because even if you're not a wrestling fan you've probably heard of john cena at this point and right. have whatever reservations about that he's hulk hogan he's a pretty boy whatever whatever that case may be that you don't get into wrestling so, and I think, think I also think there's a, a, a spot for, and we talk about this on the show, our own experiences with with uh, people that got on board with wrestling because they started watching Total Divas. Damn it, Sorg! Which, is, <laughs> which God damn it, Sorg! Which it, is my those people exist. Those which people is exist. my interlude into Mad Mike joining us and telling us about his thing for the big question. Well, that was gonna be mine because I wanted to take it a completely different direction. It still so is. I actually. Got, I actually got one of my friends mm -hmm. a little bit into wrestling mm -hmm. via Total Divas. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a real thing because uh, one of my friends watched a lot of the E! Network. And anytime she would see ads for Total Divas, she was like, what is this show? I know you're the wrestling guy. Like, is this something I should watch? I'm like, oh, yeah, it, it's about all the all the women wrestlers. And sometimes their husbands are on. And they're hilarious. And they're the best people on the show. And it's really funny. You get an intro into a lot of the characters and everything. You get to see some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. And after that, I segued her right into NXT, and I showed her Bailey and Sasha and Charlotte. And just stuff like that. Like As long as you have a gateway point into it, you can pretty much go wherever you want as long as it's something that's quality. Like, I, I just... I, I mean, in Total Divas, not everyone's cup of tea. I understand that. I think it's entertaining as hell. It's not the best written stuff, but it it definitely maps out who these characters are, both on screen and off screen. It gets you into the world if you're hesitant about sitting there and watching a 15-minute match. Because it gives you the highlights, it gives you snippets. Sometimes it'll even show you like a SummerSlam main event or a WrestleMania main event. Like, it will show you stuff to see if you want to pursue this further, and it gives you kind of that option to do so. Nice, nice. Who didn't we touch on? Matt, uh, Matt, you haven't said anything, right? Uh, nope, and uh, I, I agree with you. I think um, if I had to get somebody into it, I would take them to a live event and preferably an independent show. Um, it, it just, just for example... Um, when uh, I took my wife to um, her first independent wrestling show outside of Pittsburgh, and she saw a show where ACH was there and Dalton Castle was there, and seeing those guys in person just one time was the equivalent of like seeing them on TV a hundred times. The connection was so deep that like I'm watching like Global Wars over the weekend. 
and she sees ACH on Global Wars, and she's like, oh, that guy, I remember him, and now she's like, oh, this is Ring of Honor, oh, this guy's from New Japan, and that just feeds him right into it. Seeing the show in person is is how you get super hooked, in my opinion, at least. Um, you can watch it on TV, you can flip away, you can be looking at your phone, but when you're at the show yourself, you're so focused on it, and you're taking it in, it's a it's a deeper experience and it's a much tighter connection. Awesome. Awesome. And did we touch on everybody here? Uh, let me see if there's anything else going on. And, uh, if you have any, any, uh, uh, response to this as well out there in uh, Twitter land, you can up, uh, at mayhem show and you use the hashtag hashtag WMS big question. And, uh, this week we are giving away a best of CM Punk volume, uh, volume one. Of course, uh, he was here in the area with the international wrestling cartel around the 20, 2002s to 20, 2004 ishes. And uh, we got two volumes of some great stuff, bat- matches with him with uh, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, all kinds of great stuff in there, uh, Chris Saban. And uh, we're going to be giving that digital away for uh, uh, people that are answering the big question for this week. And uh, you can let us know your thoughts on that. And uh, in the meantime, we had some answers to last week's big question, which was uh, we were asking at what point should Daniel Bryan hang it up? Thank you, Will, for that one, LB. Uh our friend Power to the Smarks, uh, OccupyProWrestling.com, I believe is the, the site. Uh, he says Brian will no longer be pushed when WWE has someone else that can get the crowd reaction. Oh, hi, Sami Zayn. There you go. He wins a copy of The Dance, Road to Super Indy, including a main event of uh, what ended up being a four-way match between uh, IWC heavyweight champion Tommy Dreamer. You might know him out in Philly. Uh, Dalton Castle, who we mentioned, and RJ City, a guy you should be looking out for if you haven't caught him. Oh, yeah, there was a fourth spot that had to get filled because Colin Delaney couldn't make it, and that was Justin Labar, of all people, of Chair Shot Reality. Uh, see how that went. There's a video that I believe is going viral of Tommy Dreamer with a fake leg, which he says afterwards it was the third time somebody's given him a fake leg amongst two people. Check out that story. It's on, I think, Justin Labar's or the IWC uh, YouTube. Uh, we've been sharing that here on, on Mayhem Show as well. So um, so uh, with that, uh, please also uh, uh, check us out. Check out our friends. Speaking of indie wrestling, uh, ProWrestlingTees.com. But start at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. We got some shirts. Uh, LB is, if I can pull up his camera here, where's he at? Where is he at? It's I true. Can, I got to set up my thing here. And uh, LB is here. There it is. There's the sexiness. Oh, Property. Uh, my camera's not going to stay. That's but all right. Check That's that all right. Out. I see it. I see it. There it is. There it is. If you're on video, Property of Mayhem. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so, the, thing, the thing with this shirt, Sorg, is that it's so comfortable. <laughs> it's not just stylish. It's so comfortable. It feels good on my skin. Mm-hmm. Now you can get it to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS and also the great Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com t-shirt. Uh, and uh, these are designs by the awesome Alex Cars, who's helping also help us out, of course, with the redesign of IndieWrestling.us. And uh, help us out, uh, support the show, and wear the threads wherever you go. Many of the Mayhemers are sporting this stuff. And while you're there, hey, there's a lot of stuff to check out at ProWrestlingTees.com. The Four Horsewomen I have a t-shirt up there. Great stuff. A lot of a lot of the old names getting up. Diamond Dallas Page with his DDP yoga. Uh, Macho Man Randy Savage, Steve Austin has a store. Somebody named CM Punk uh, is on there as well, so you can check out all that. But not, don't just get these guys. You know, it's great that you can support them a little more directly than buying that WWE shirt where they get a small, small percentage off of. Uh, but you can also go check out Indie Wrestling. Check out Colt Cabana in here. Check out ACH, as we mentioned. Lita's on here as well. Uh, Anthony Nice, another awesome guy I know we've seen in the area. Uh, you know, a lot of Ring of Honor talent. Uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan himself. Uh, Bobby Roode. Uh, trying to find some other guys. Chris Saban. Chris Hero. Uh, some Support them. There's another way to support. Hey, look, this guy used to be on NXT, CJP, uh, the CJ, formerly CJ Parker, right, on uh, NXT. Dusty Rhodes, or Dustin Rhodes, all, all kinds of uh, awesome stuff. G- guys, Tugboat, Typhoon, Shockmaster has his own store. <laughs> so if you're going to get on the meme, why not support the guy that is, uh, he's, still, he's still benefiting off of tripping over a wall. What, 20 years ago? Longer than that at this point. Jeez. So go support indie wrestling, but please start at prowrestlingtees.com slash WMS. It is time, I'm sorry, for the impact report. <laughs> 
Uh, with Mad Mike joining us, he is the one sole survivor still uh, tuning in. Uh, has Destination America and is flipping into uh, Impact Wrestling in between uh, Amish House Hunters and Barbecue bar- Bake Off, whatever the hell the shows are over there barbecue these days. Masters, barbecue Pitmasters. Barbecue Pitmasters. We, we we're all sponsored by them this week. I, oh, well, really? <laughs> I'm not joking. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. There, um, all right. I'm going to say this. I know Eamon's not going to be happy about this. Uh, first of all, when Impact comes back to Wednesdays, we are going to talk about it in the midweek. No, oh, no. Just you saying, didn't even talk about SmackDown this week. Until until Slammiversary. I'm giving them until Slammiversary. If they Mike, haven't... That if that they haven't... Happy place? <laughs> Mike, you, are, you listen to me. We're yep. having an intervention because you are in an abusive relationship with professional <laughs> wrestling. He's a battered fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the one who gets all butthurt because WWE decides to make more money. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Getting, getting, aiming. Not just against us, no. Getting, uh, yes, they're, they're solely going. Look at him; he's so flustered. Us. His hair is getting so fussed up throughout oh, the night. He's like, oh, he's pulling out this, this, this <laughs> elimination chamber. And I go, oh, you people see ACH versus Andy Dalton. Next week, Eamon's gonna be rocking in the corner talking to a rat named George. Anyway, just, uh. uh, uh. You're just a rat in a cage. Speaking of impact, oh, oh, uh, so um, I there's don't there's and there's the this more house. there's more sm- smashing pumpkins quotes coming yes. up over the coming weeks, isn't there? Oh, I uh, really hope so. Oh, no. That, that um, would require people to know other smashing pumpkin songs besides that one about. Listen, Amen. Tonight, tonight we're talking about impact. Okay. Yes. So anyway, uh, <laughs> those are the only two pumpkins references. Again, right I apologize, LB. Um. I don't mind what the dollhouse is doing. Um, okay. The material they're being provided with is horrible, but they are making the best with it as they can. Taryn Terrell is actually being a really effective heel. Um, she's doing the crazy route, which works for a lot of people, and I think she's doing it pretty well. And plus, her, her and Gail Kim have really good chemistry in the ring, so the fact that they have an actual story behind it this time, as opposed to to a respect, respect, respect thing. I'm, I'm, a f- I'm in favor of it. I don't mind it. And uh, Marty, Marty and um, Jade are really great. They, they had a tag team match against Broken Rebel and actually made Broken Rebel look mildly competent. Uh, it was fun to watch them work together. And the gimmick probably sets women's wrestling back 10 years. But they're trying the best they can with it. And they're... At least being somewhat entertaining with it. Um, it, it. It's nothing. It's nothing against the performers because I agree. I think that as performers, they're doing the best with what they have. But what they have is so regressive, yes. and, and and so uncreative. I'm sorry. I don't know if I, I I looked away and missed. So what what are they doing as far as? Um, the story now is that it's not just about Taryn having the knockouts title and wanting to be the best and and trying to prove herself to everybody, which is what the story was originally about. Now she wants to steal Gail Kim's husband. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the whole gimmick of the dog, you, know, you know, like women do. What's, what's the deal? She wants to like start a cooking show. Is that like her? <laughs> like, what's going on? She could just be looking for cooking tips. Food Network Destination how... America crossover going to happen? Like, what's going to happen? <laughs> um, so but yeah, the, the dollhouse gimmick is kind of like someone in the back just saw a sucker punch and said, "Hey, that's a great idea for a stable." Um, but. They also had a a pretty fun little uh, hardcore war, they were calling it. It's kind of like Lethal Lockdown without a cage. Um, It was a fun match. They brought Lashley back, which I was surprised at because I thought he was just flat out done with the company. Mm -hmm. Um, But I still hope and pray that this is all building to EC3 getting a title shot because I think... I think EC3 as a as the world champion, especially if he's still undefeated going into that, is something I could really, you know, buy into. Wait, wait, wait! wait. EC3 is still undefeated. EC3 yep. is still undefeated in singles competition. Wow. Yep. And in tag, well, and in, in tag matches, he's never taken the pinfall or submission. This is true. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, it seems like really... they should be making a bigger deal out of it. Oh. EC3 comes out and makes a big deal out of it every week, but because he's a giant dick about it, 
you know, they kind of downplay it and they say that he's underhanded. He has Tyrus to help him in the corner. But you know what? He's still undefeated. Uh, but he has a mini feud going on with Ken Anderson right now, which whoop de doo he gets to be Ken Anderson a whole bunch. I guess it's better than wrestling, oh, I don't know, Chris Melendez. But, um, yeah, I, I really hope that – it seems like they're grooming EC3 for a top spot, and based on what I've heard from Billy Corgan, he knows that you can have a guy like EC3 at the top to be the face of your company because, let's face it, you Google Kurt Angle, you'll find at least – Eight or ten things why you don't want him to be the face of your company. Plus, how many times can you put Kurt Angle on top of the card? How many times can you put Bobby Roode and Eric Young as your champion before it's just like, okay, here we go again. Why not take the chance on EC3? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, they gave Chris Saban a shot. Why not EC3? And yeah. EC3 is ten times more entertaining than almost anyone else on the roster. Uh but yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to what's coming down the pipe. I accidentally read some spoilers here and there, so some of it's good, some of it's not so good. But you know, that's the ebb and flow of impact. And so, um, uh, did you get to speak at all about the ending of, of that hardcore war? Because because going back to um uh, uh Billy Corgan and his uh, judgment, uh, he 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 uh, sent out a tweet before the show aired. Um, saying to watch Impact because the end would be, quote, and I'm not making this up, the best book thing you will see all year from any promotion. <laughs> I am not lying when I said that he tweeted that. Mm, okay. Tad short of hitting the mark on that, it wasn't even the best book thing on Impact this year. <laughs> uh, that would be East T3 Rockstar Spud for those keeping track at home. If you haven't watched that hair versus hair match, Watch it. I'm telling you, that's really good shit. But uh, okay, I didn't know he tweeted that because he did tweet I, that. I did not watch Impact Live this week. I came home from Vegas and I binge watched Payback, Impact, and Raw. So I've seen a lot of wrestling today. But yeah, Dang. Impact was. I mean, it was fine. It was serviceable. There were a few good like, and like I said, the in ring product. It's never bad. Mm -hmm. But it's just the stories need to improve. And actually. There was nothing really abhorrent about the storylines this week. So, mm -hmm. progress. Uh, Vaughn, are you are you uh, following uh, Impact at all? Because you're the new voice uh, here. Uh, not like I should, I don't think. Uh, it's, <laughs> the, the night it's on is, is tough, and I've recently uh, kind of put the plug on the cable. Mm -hmm. I got Roku now, so I watch, I watch a lot of my wrestling here in the office of uh, Philly.com because mm -hmm. there's cable here. But um, I, I do follow it as far as what's, I know what's going on. But as far as sitting on and watching it week to week, it's kind of tough for me to do that on Fridays. Mm -hmm. Is Wednesday going to help you out? I guess not if you're, not, you're on Roku. But um... Well, I'm here on Wednesday, so I get to watch NXT. And I get to watch uh, – I try to watch Lucha Underground when I can. And, now, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll, I'm watching more Impact. It's just when I do watch it, it just seems like a product that's, that's – it just has no momentum behind it. And it's unfortunate. Because they got a lot of talented people down there and um, on Impact Wrestling, but just there's no real juice to it. Like you watch NXT, there's a there's some there's an energy mm -hmm. with it. You watch Lucha Underground, there's an energy there. Even Raw, there's some type of innate energy that's just like you know you're excited. With Impact, you watch it, it just seems like it's like uh, well, here we go again. You know, it doesn't really have that that juice behind it that uh, successful promotions have. Mm -hmm. I think actually on the Roku they have uh, Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore. Coming on Wednesdays now too, so yeah, that I might did. be that might be something you want to turn into because House of Hardcore is pretty good stuff. I, I was at a House of Hardcore show back in the uh, back in March actually when they had uh, I think it was House of Hardcore seven or eight. Yeah, I was at that show. Ah, okay, nice. nice. All right. What do you, what do you else do you guys think about like this this change to Wednesday? I, I think I agree with a lot of you guys. Like, there's a lot of competition now with Lucha Underground with. NXT amongst like at least the people I think that Impact probably is trying to reach. Yeah, I mean, like I, when I first heard it, my thought was TNA is just walking directly into the buzz saws. But <laughs> kind of like the Monday night, it, kind of like the Monday night move. Of, if you can get off a Friday night and get onto a night when people are actually sitting down and watching wrestling, mm -hmm. and maybe you can get some buzz going on Twitter, and if you can get people to at least flip you know flipping's a lot easier than sitting down and turning on the tv 
that's a shorter distance to watch your show. So maybe it can work. Um, it's time to pull the trigger on EC3. He's the last bullet they have in the gun. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I, I feel terrible because just like a lot of you guys, I like a lot of the guys on Impact, but I, I can't bring myself to watch this show. I've only got so much time in my life, and I'm not <laughs> going to burn it on TNA when I could watch Lucha for a second time. I mean, that's just my choice. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, if, I was, if I was Impact, I'd move to Tuesday. Why not? What can you lose on Tuesday that you can do um, so much more on Wednesday? <laughs> they could never compete with the Wrestling Mayhem show. I mean, come on. We can't about besides, the same amount of viewers. Besides that, besides that, what else are they going <laughs> to – there's no competition on Tuesdays. I mean, why run into Wednesdays when you got, like you said, NXT is on Wednesdays, even though it's not on television, but it's still – people are not going to be watching TV mm-hmm. while they're watching NXT. They're going to be watching NXT. Mm-hmm. But they might be watching NXT on their television. So – uh, there, there's that, and then and you got Lucha Underground, and if you if you have Lucha Underground, if you're able to watch El Rey Network, you probably got into the routine of watching Lucha Underground every week. And at, at best, you're going to be checking out Impact on the DVR. And who's to say if you have the time to, to do that? If you, if you already watch an hour of NXT and an hour of Lucha Underground, now you're going to turn around and check out two hours of Impact. Maybe you burnt out by that point. So mm. to me, I I go to Tuesdays. I I don't know what. What great programming Destination America has on Tuesdays? I don't know if they, you know, <laughs> Pitmasters, you know. Uh, I think it's called Ghost like, uh, It's called Ghost Rapers, I think. Oh, well, no, no. that might be that their ratings monster on Tuesdays. I don't know, but <laughs> I, I, I'm, am I the only one? I, and at least from the people here, I don't think this was a strategic move at all. I think this was a move based off of Destination America. It happened. And usually, we're trying to get rid of it. I, I'm gonna say usually when you have a young com- uh, young show on a network and it gets moved from time slots, that's not usually a great sign. Um, I, I I don't think it was a strategic move at all to, for them to move the Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. Um, I also heard a, a rumor that I think Dixie Carter said somewhere that they were thinking of doing a three hour impa- impact, mm-hmm. which Ooh. I love that their theory is what our problem is we need an extra hour. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, no. Um, th- I also want to point out. This is the third – this is the second time they've changed days because when they first showed up on Destination America, it was on Thursdays. That's yeah. not a good sign. Yeah. That's not and a then good they sign. moved to Fridays. Was- Technically, they have replays on Saturdays. Mm-hmm. And now but those are gone morning. now, right? They, they canceled those Saturday morning replays, which was, the actual, which was actually the time when I would actually sample impact was during those Saturday mornings because I was like – Saturday mornings, eh, it kind of feels like wrestle time around 10 a.m. You know, it, it used to I'll be flip them over. That makes good background noise. You know, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon used to be wrestling time back in the day. So hey, Saturday yeah. morning slam, we all worked. No, oh, I love that. I, I was a big fan of Saturday morning slam. I was, I was getting in the morning, having my Fruit Loops, <laughs> just just like back in the day. I was kind of thinking of like wrestling challenge and superstars, but Saturday mm-hmm. morning slam too. <laughs> it was close enough, right? I mean, because I mean, it was it was in there with like like old episodes of Justice League Unlimited and Dragon Ball Z, which was not my era. You know, WMAC Masters Sword. W- WMAC Masters. <laughs> it was right after <laughs> WMAC Masters, American one of the worst Gladiators. shows in the world. What, what? And then American Gladiators. The you know, American oh. Gladiators. You know, Gladiators. The, it, was, oh. it was just it was just like back in the day for that part, you know, and it didn't apply to anything else it was its own thing and 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 nothing really made sense and i never saw a headshot it was glorious wait that was weird but anyways uh but impact wrestling we'll see what happens there i don't know it, it doesn't i don't know I, I genuinely don't know how tna is still on television anywhere no no their 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 marketing department their pr department has to be the best pr department in the history of public relations uh, it was, you have to be slinging a lot of bullshit to get on television still mm-hmm. gotta be gotta be all right let's move on we do have some feedback here from the fans uh you can also drop us a line 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline or that email address good times, good times. that's right good times at wrestling mayhem show.com first <laughs> one Fox is so gun shy i'm anymore. afraid oh uh, i'm afraid he he went to say the phone number and i almost said good times mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Is there any way we can just get good times the number? Oh, yeah. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> I feel like, like I, was, I, I don't know. I haven't tried for a new number for a while. So maybe, maybe it's the time to do that. 
Uh, anyways, uh, I mean, the fact that I got a 412 number, I got WMS in there. That's got to be something. But uh, anyways, we got an email from our good friend Alex Cars, the guy that makes those awesome shirts, like LB Warrants, right there. There it is. Well, you kind of, there it is. Hey, there it is. There it is. Uh, but he sends an email. And by the way, power to the smarts.com. I screwed that up. I don't know why I flipped them. I, I, I apologize. That. We don't plug them enough. They're doing good stuff over there. Hello, 10 percenters in the WMS corner of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Universe. Matt, I've been using that a lot this week. By the way, I'm really digging that. Who me? Yeah, wasn't that it? Wasn't that you that came up with that? Came up with what? The the the. the I had nothing to do with it. Sorgatron Media Podcast Universe, like the Marvel thing. Oh yeah, the you Sorgatron did that on like a midweek war, like two universe. weeks You're ago. Right. The SPU. It's been it's the yeah, SPU. It's it, by the way, you put a TM by this as well. Wait, does that mean Doc Remedy is our Agent Coulson? Because he died, and then he came back on a show later. Yes, I guess so. See? Okay. That's a deep cut. And he kind of started a new team. I, I don't know. Anyways, um, it's your boy Alex Cars casually reminding you that it is a great time to be a wrestling fan, whether it's Raw on a good week, the Lucha Underground every week, or the millions and millions of fine independent and international wrestling promotions uh, out there. Wrestling fans have made it out like bandits in this day and age. Also, TNA is a thing. As we, <laughs> as we discussed. True alternative for caring uh i have been uh, i have but one question to discuss why in the blue smurf is our truth in the chamber match for the ic <laughs> title no, no okay okay well let me finish his, his thing and i want to go back to this question because I, I i we were talking about this at the pay-per-view uh, party uh, at the Carlins's. Uh, until next time, friends this is alex cars reminding you to join the pickums league at its new home wrestling pickums that's uh pick m's e m s M's, not them, M's. Uh, wrestlingpickums.tumblr.com. We've been actually giving away some stuff from pittsburghwrestling.com over there to the winners. Uh, so, And then sometimes they don't work, and we've been troubleshooting that. But but, the, but generally, it works out well. Uh, so go check that out if you're into doing pickums and, and that kind of thing. We've been uh, supporting them a bit. Uh, putting the smart back in smart mark, Alex Cars. Uh, again, power to the smarts.com. P.S. I have a message for Lunchbox. Fight mm. Owens, fight. Fight Owens, fight. Fight Owens, fight. <laughs> I, I agree. You agree? Okay. He's good with that. <laughs> you you turn on your savior. I want to see fight. I want to see Owens fight. <laughs> but but at, at the same time, you're also thinking lose, Owens, lose, right? Mm. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, I, I, John Cena is going to win. I can have all the wishful thinking in the world about John Cena <laughs> putting over NXT, but I mean, let's be serious. So <laughs> no, he is the superior the wrestler. Thing. Is this the match that's going to make you flip sides, LB? Is this... Oh, I don't know about that. All right. Matt Carlin's, I don't know we've, about that. We've been living good for a while, but I just hey, hey, I've been riding high on this U.S. title uh, reign. LB, if, if John Cena were to show up, say, I don't know, at, at an NXT live pay-per-view-ish event, say mm-hmm. tomorrow night, mm-hmm. and cost a certain Kevin Owens a championship, mm-hmm. How, how, how would you feel about Elimination Chamber then? Oh, I would probably come all over the place. Okay. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> Sorg and Bobby when uh, Kevin Steen came out. <laughs> or Kevin Owens came out against John Cena on Raw. Uh, we all made surprise noises, and then I just kind of mumbled, I came. So <laughs> You could say I'm excited yeah. for this match if you like. Did, did you guys see the uh, reaction of Kevin Owens' son? Those yes, I did. I did. Yes. Yes, it was yes. horrible. Oh, my God. It was like it was all Kevin over Owens' that. kids are two of the most over people in wrestling for me. Between his <laughs> little baby holding the NXT title and now his kid marking out to him showing up against Cena, I'm like, Kevin Owens' kids are more over than half the DNA roster. That's awesome, though. I think he's probably a John Cena fan, and then <laughs> you know, your, your dad is fighting John Cena. That might be the I point. I think he was holding a Cena wrestle buddy uh-huh. and was wearing Kevin a Kevin Owens, Owens shirt. shirt. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's how awesome is that? I can't wait for Renee Young to interview the kid on who he thinks is going to win that elimination chamber. Oh, my goodness. Well, no, you can't have him on WWE TV because you can't acknowledge him as Owen Owens. Yeah. Oh, that's yes, right. I can. forgot about that. <laughs> Why really? not? He's going to have to have a WWE's going to have to come name. up with a name for his the kid. Name. I recommend 
Steen Owens. And that will be his kids. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Okay, back to the question. Our truth He was asking why Why is uh, our truth in this elimination chamber? He's kind of the fill in guy, first of all. God hates Cody Rhodes. But, <laughs> yeah. God hates too? Cody Rhodes. Is that too? That's why. But yeah, I, 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 was telling, why in his I was telling Matt, though, you know, I mean, no, he hasn't been doing anything interesting, but our truth is really talented, guys. I he's love talented Arthur. and um, he's, he's expendable. Yeah. Um, like a lot of those guys that they're throwing into this brutal, violent structure. That <laughs> and he's done it. I have like a to theory. One or two of them. I have a theory. Um, last night on Raw, mm-hmm. we saw a thing happen with one of the guys in that match mm-hmm. and a certain angry Bulgarian. Mm-hmm. Do we think that Rusev just beats the shit out of our truth and takes his spot in the chamber? Rusev's he's already, already in, in the it. chamber. He's in it. Yeah. He's in it, right? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, then God I, just hates Cody Rhodes. Uh, I love how they, did, I love how they decided these chamber. Um, I was going to say, I love how they decided these chamber entrants. Cody Rhodes isn't getting in it because uh, he lost to R-Truth. Ryback has lost, like, the, what? He lost to Bray Wyatt the pay-per-view, then lost to Sheamus on Raw in the match to get him in the chamber. And they're like, you know what? We're just going to put you in the chamber anyways. I don't think it was in a qualifier match, I thought. Uh, Vaughn, you were trying to say something. I want you to get your uh, a bit oh, into I was going to say, I love our truth but he has no business being in this match. It's like <laughs> it's the same thing with, like, Matt, the Matadors, uh, Los mm-hmm. Matadors, and the tag title match. Like, we haven't seen them since WrestleMania, but they get a tag title match every six months for some that's reason. Right, I don't, that's I don't right. That's right. Although I think the Matadors are going to be the sacrificial lamb and much like Kofi was taken out the one year when Edge did the double chambers thing, I think uh, Ascension takes them out and they just take the spot. And oh, they- but Ascension didn't get a match. Oh, Ascension's got to be in the match. match. Yeah, I think Ascension is in the match. Are they already? But the Wyatt family. Oh. Yeah, I guess it'd be Harper and Rowan. I hope something Oh, like no, that it was Harper and no Rowan. Reason. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. That's mm-hmm. right. There's no reason Harper and Rowan shouldn't be match because exactly. they're a much, 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 much better tag team than Matt <laughs> Exactly. And, and not understating that at, at, at any at, at all. So... Again, back to our truth. Uh, maybe he's there for a quick pinfall for somebody. Maybe, mm-hmm. like you said, Rusev. Maybe he's there, to, you know, to be killed by Rusev, and you didn't want to kill Neville. You didn't want to kill yeah. Stardust. Yeah. I mean, Keep it. You, but if if I'm not mistaken, though, our truth's been in like chamber matches before. He has, like in heavyweight mm-hmm. title chamber matches. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so, he's um, that to provide a, a veteran presence because I don't know. I mean, I don't know if Ryback's been in the chamber. I don't know. I, I'm, I think Sheamus has been in there, but I don't know. I just. I'm pretty sure there's a rational explanation why he's in there. I don't see a rational explanation why the Matador is on the tag. <laughs> well, I think I think our truth is in the Intercontinental match. It's it's like it's splash over from when he was fighting for the tit- the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania, mm-hmm. but before Daniel Bryan got it and then got injured. You know, he's he. They were like, well, he was kind of successful. People were laughing at him trying to steal the title before, mm-hmm. and they had some okay matches before. So let's put him in here. If I'm seeing right, this is uh, actually our truth. Fourth elimination chamber. Jesus, did you see that? I just looked it up too, so I was like, three elimination chambers. <laughs> and those were for uh, championship match, uh, championship match at WrestleMania one year, and heavyweight championship match. Jesus. So there you go. Good there you for go. Him. All over the place. We got one more email here. I want to get to uh, this one from Antonio Garza. Oh, but he sent another email uh, simply saying, "Happy Kane Day, everybody." Nineteen. Ultimate XD out, now wearing the mask, is now the sweaty one. Uh, but anyways, uh, he says, uh, Hey guys, it is I, the man of a thousand deaths and a thousand lives combined, zero, two K. Is that a, is that an, a, a, a Lucha Underground reference? That sounds like yes. a Lucha yep, Underground yes. line. Um, just say it in Spanish in his accent, and it will sound deadly. Versus me saying it mm-hmm. in English, in very white guy speak. Uh, anyways, no talk. Uh, straight to the question, since the Owen Cena segment is likely the hot topic tonight, I have a quick round table question for y'all. He is from Texas. Uh, who would you like to see in or out in uh, WWE uh, uh, answer Cena's challenge in the coming weeks? As a follow-up, who would you like to see actually win the title from Cena? Personally, his answer, I think the perfect shtick is to have Enzo come out Talk his gimmick and intro Big Cass as the challenger. I just want to see Enzo talk jive on Cena. Uh, later's people, 
Uh, watch the Midweek War. Zero out. Yes, please do. Please do. He is a great contributor to the Midweek War, mostly talking Lucha Underground NXT. And sometimes they get to SmackDown, and one day they'll talk about Impact, apparently. So, mm-hmm. mm, no, everybody's shaking their heads now. <laughs> we are. <laughs> guys, it's happening. I have my theories on how to handle that. We'll talk about off-air. But what do you guys think? Who who do you want to see challenge? And, and in the long run, who do you think? <laughs> I'm sorry, Sorg. I didn't mean to laugh, but uh, Riz in the chat room just suggested Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> we were, were we calling that last night? He was in there in the in the in the hangout talking about that, wasn't he? Like that'd be a fun one. That'd be a fun one some week. Why I'm not? Surprise, Riz is suggesting Kali. You, you just have Duggan and bring out Sergeant Slaughter, and bring a Corporal Kirshner and you know <laughs> Corporal Kirshner, America, Kirshner. Yeah, all those old Americans. <laughs> <laughs> General Reaction, oh wait. GI Bro, oh wait. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Did you guys, <laughs> wait, wait, side note. Com- complete side note. Did anybody see that GI Bro is a comic book that, that Booker was pimping on the uh, on the pre-show for Sunday? Really? Like, hey, this, I need to find this. I smell a crossover. I smell <laughs> Uh, I, 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 yeah, this we need to find. I, I, we're going to read it, LB, along with our other wrestling crappy comic books, and it's going to be a panel ride episode. Panelride.com, check it out. Anyways, uh, but no, uh, who do you who, who you guys want to see? More NXT guys. I, I like the Enzo and Cass uh, situation. I would love to see Enzo talk jive at John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see Samoa Joe on his first night beat John Cena for the U.S. title. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> and 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 do it. Maybe in like some dominant fashion, just like how Brock beat Cena at WrestleMania. I mean, at WrestleMania SummerSlam last year, mm-hmm. just shocked the world with. And don't do it with a Sami Zayn, mm-hmm. who you, you're not sure you can follow up. Do it with somebody like Samoa Joe, who you know is, who's carried himself like a dominant champion before, and you know he can back it up in the ring as a dominant champion. What better way to do it than to have him just tear Sean Cena's head off and take his title on his first night in? I mean, sure, you, you don't have a whole lot of room to go up. I guess. The only way you go from, up from there is to win the WWE title. But mm-hmm. you talk about making a splash your first night. Maybe that's the way with, with Samoa Joe. I think Neville should get another shot at it, and I think he should take it. I think that should be the story, too. Because yeah. the big yeah. story for that match was that he almost beat him. That's mm-hmm. a good pay-per-view match, I think. Is that is that big rematch? You can build it over a few weeks and 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 have a really good match at a pay per view, decisive. Although I feel like they won't give it to Neville without like whoever Cena's taking on next interfering. You and know? if if they want to actually make it an interesting storyline, at Elimination Chamber, have Neville go up to Cena and say, "Hey, listen, I know this guy surprised you on Raw. I fought him. You need to know what you're up against because you had enough trouble against me." Mm-hmm. And that guy almost killed me in NXT. Mm-hmm. Like, and have Neville be kind, not heelish, but like say, you're overmatched against Kevin Owens because you could barely handle me. Like, <laughs> no, like, like something like that. Because, because if it wasn't for Rusev, it looked like Cena was losing that match. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think I think they could play that up. And it gives Neville a little bit more personality because, I'm going to be honest, ne- to me, Neville needs all the personality he can get. And to get a little jab in at Cena, it's still the NXT guys going against John Cena. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I, as much as I want to suggest Heath Slater, um, this, <laughs> this, 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 this one... This one this one just hit me like a lightning bolt because I just realized that there's a member of the New Day that doesn't have a title. Xavier Woods should oh, beat God. John Cena with massive interference. Oh, oh my God. God. And then we could have Cena versus New Day feud going out of that. Do you think he do you think he'd freebird rule his US his US championship <laughs> matches? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Apparently he do twin magic with Kofi, so <laughs> twin magic. I, I have <laughs> The same visual of John Cena just tearing apart a New Day with his bare hands all by himself, like he did with the Wire family, though. Uh, you mean like Big Show did at WrestleMania? Yeah, yeah. Like he did to Cesaro and uh and uh uh the kid a few yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. But at least Big Show's big. Yeah. I mean, oh, I, I can see Cena putting them in a box that says NXT on it and sending them on their way. Oh. <laughs> no one, like at least they would play up the the promo that Cena cut during that Stephanie thing that he had, where he's like, these NXT guys are coming up and they're trying to take my spot. Like Triple H is grooming them to take my spot. Mm-hmm. 
Like, I, I wish you would play on that. Although, guys, there, there's one very important person who has said they would accept the challenge that we haven't thrown into this equation. And that person is Saucer Banks. <laughs> There's nothing I would love more. I was actually <laughs> going to say, I'd love to see Charlotte come up. And beat Cena? I know. Me That'd too. be great. I want to win. Sasha said, Sasha tweeted that she would answer the challenge. Did she? <laughs> she would go, rise up and win the U.S. title just like her daddy. Because Flair had the U.S. title at some point, right? Because... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Back sure. Sure. I mean, I, I'm excited. I, the first thing I thought of is uh, Owens is going to beat him for the title and make it a Canadian title, just like, you know, the good old days at WCW. Just like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Just like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> it, it comes around, <laughs> right? French Canadian title. French Canadian title. I thought that Russo was going to make the European title. I was looking forward to that. That never came yeah. to fruition. Then X Pac comes out and challenges him. <laughs> great. Shane McMahon follows after that. Mm-hmm. And D'Lo Brown with his chest protector. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Looking at the real deal now. Uh, anyways, yeah, oh, I knew dear. somebody get me. I knew <laughs> somebody get me. Uh, so much fun. Thanks, guys, for uh, dropping your questions in. And uh, if you guys want to just uh, misdirect and redirect the show here at the end, uh, let us know. Good times at WrestlingMamShow dot com or four one two two zero six WMS zero. So, all right, on that point. Good times! Whoa! <laughs> shit, shit, I did it. Oh, it's shit. all right, it's all right. You'll have another uh, chance. You'll have another chance. <laughs> all right, it's time to learn. What did you learn from I'm wrestling? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What did you learn from wrestling this week, Matt Carlins? I learned that Shinsuke Nakamura is still the best wrestler on the planet. Okay, all right, awesome. How about you, Mad Mike? I learned that Lucha Underground is actually just a gritty reboot of Legends of the Hidden Temple. <laughs> that was great. You guys had me going when I was listening to that yesterday. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Dario Cueto is the evil Christopher Nolan version of Kurt Fogg. And <laughs> Matanza <laughs> is the is the sigil that Olmec was inspired by. So now you have to get medallions to protect yourself from the Temple of Guards, a.k.a. the crew. It all fits, sort. It wow. all fits. Now, now I still have to go back and, and watch from like episode three on, and that's going to be in the back of my head the entire time I watch this. Right. So, I, I think there's going to be a way where you'll be able to binge watch Lucha Underground, mm. like season one. I, I I would not be surprised if we get a Blu-ray set of it. I don't have a Blu-ray player yet. I own a lot of Blu-rays. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Eamon, what did you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> I learned that I learned that there's not a single image in professional wrestling since I started watching professional wrestling that makes me so emotional and and so drawn uh, as crying Rusev. <laughs> <laughs> just the elongated point of, uh, during that payback match, just going ah, <laughs> like it is the greatest thing that Rusev's ever done. <laughs> Hey, he can, he can go. What about you, LB? What'd you learn from wrestling? I will watch, not just watch, be fascinated by any match where one or both of the competitors is wearing light up shoes that change colors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every time. I'm Every in. Time. That's not to say that the match wasn't great. She's a very talented wrestler, and those matches are very enjoyable, but I will fucking stare at their shoes all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad she brought them back because mm-hmm. we were really was, scared was, that one week when she went heel that she wasn't wearing them. Oh, thank God. I think that's what makes her the a heel is, is a light up shoe. That, to me, that, that's a heel move. She really? has lights in her shoes in 2015. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like four-year-old kids. Right. Come on. I'm like, what is this? I bet they drive Natty's cats insane. <laughs> Von Johnson of Philly.com, what did you learn from wrestling this week? You you had a lot of experience this week, so yes, I did. But the, the one thing I learned was that uh, I think Lana went to the school of losing her accent, uh, the same school that Kofi Kingston went to five years ago. Oh no! <laughs> oh, I'm no. telling you, DJ and Dolph coming to Summerfest 2015. <laughs> Wow. Uh, from the Twitters, uh, somebody named Chad the Shad. He sounds familiar. I Chad the Shad. What? Chad the Shad. Yeah. He's got a nice ring to it. Might be a, it sounds like somebody who might have been on a show called Wrestling Mayhem Show eight years ago. But uh, anyways... Yeah. Uh, he learned that I really he really enjoys the idea of a tag team el- elimination chamber match. Uh, interesting teams, but hell of an idea. 
There you go. Glad to see they're stretching out. We'll never get war games, but we'll get this, right? I hope we get a Divas elimination. Uh, you would, yeah. I know we're not going to, but God damn it, I want it. It's six so Divas put in that match, though. Uh, yeah, Tamina, yeah. Naomi, Bree, Nikki, Paige, and mystery challenger Charlotte. Boom! There you go. You bring up some Tamina, NXT. Tamina in an elimination chamber would be the scariest possible thing. Not for the other competitors. <laughs> If they can put RVD in the Elimination Chamber, they can put Tamina in there. That's true. I just yeah, figured that you wouldn't put like Tamina and Naomi in the same match against each other since they just joined forces and Naomi and, and Nikki and Bree. And, you know, I, I guess, but that that's as deep as your division is, and so be it. Yeah, I'm just still trying to do the math. I'm realizing that at one point during that tag match, there could possibly be 12 people in that oh, Elimination Chamber. It's going to happen. There's going to be 12 around. people in there. It's, it's like the Royal Rumble, man. <laughs> I like, hope there's no early elimination. I want to see just the full, like, I just look a big, big blender with wrestlers in it. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a colander of see, wrestlers. You see facts and bulls and, and <laughs> millions of dollars flying out of there. Cats, yeah. Wow. Wow. You know Cesaro's going to swing someone into the pod, into the fence, into the pod, into the fence. Oh, yes. I think he kind of did that before, didn't he? He's been in one of these. Uh, from the Facebook, we got a lot of people with what they learned this week. Alex Carr's learned that wrestling still has a share of magical moments. Thanks, Kevin Owens. Uh, Mad Mike. Matt Mike, you already put one in here. Is that what you, is this what you said? Uh, I didn't know if I'd be awake enough to be I haven't watched today. Raw yet, and I'm already more excited for Elimination Chamber than I was for Payback. Okay. Uh, Garza learned that Lucha Underground can make something a me- as meaningless as an old medallion be more important than the Intercontinental title. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you, Owens. Thanks. Uh, Darren, uh, actually, Darren De Niro from Indie Mayhem Show last week, he learned that WWE, if they wanted to, has the potential to really use their developmental brand to incorporate new stars in the main roster. I think Please Hire Me should have been after that. Uh, go go retweet his Tough Enough video. Go support him. Um, hey, side note. Thank you, everybody, that, that helped us. Uh, he was not on the voting for Super Indie for the final spot. And after a little... Uh, a bit of uh, uh, Twitter noise. Uh, he is now on there. So please go vote for Darren De Niro. Get a friend of the show into Super Indie. Uh, you can make a difference and have a voice in that as well. Uh, so that's over at IWCWrestling.com and check out the post about the Super, super Indie entrance. Great stuff. Uh, Ray Rail from Ring of Honor is there. Cedric Alexander and a bunch of names uh, from all around the Indies are uh, going to be making an appearance. Anyways. Daniel, he says... Hella good. He learned that if anyone breaks uh, the Cena burial vortex, it's it'll be uh, Kevin Owens. Gabriel learned that TNA lives being that TNA lives being embarrassed by other companies, hence why they moved. Oh, they love this is done on a phone. That's why they moved it Wednesday night. Uh, second day, Lucha Underground. Antonio uh, Garza learned that also learned that uh, I'm not the only heel in that WMS group. Uh, right, heel Riz and heel Mike. Uh, who who did was the replacement heel for him last week? I don't know. But uh, anyways, and uh, finally, uh, Wheels learned that Shane Andrews and Sanjay Dutt are one of the many reasons I love indie wrestling. They've been doing great things. I haven't watched that match yet from this weekend. They had a cruiserweight title match uh, where I think Sanjay won the belt back, and they've been feuding for a while. They had that fan strap match, for instance, last month. I'm really looking forward to editing that here this week. Uh, so that, that'll be up on Pittsburgh Wrestling, hopefully within the next two weeks uh, for their no retreat. Uh, uh, Tracy Smothers is on the show. I, that's going to be... Hello. Yeah, hi. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> uh, what did I learn? Uh, I learned... Uh, 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 I learned... Uh, what did I learn? Damn it. Uh, I learned cane mask is fun. As you can tell by my Instagram <laughs> this past weekend. Um, and also, uh, I, I'm so happy to learn that Riz did not automatically get hurt when wearing the Sin Cara mask. Um <laughs> I, 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 this, this is this is oh, this is why this happened. Why I happen to have a cane mask uh, this week? Such great timing. My sister gave me my belated uh, uh, birthday present, and it was a three pack of masks with with Mysterio, Sin Cara, and and Kane, and uh, and and they're nice ones too, and they actually kind of fit my face. So, if you had to guess which of those masks would have been relevant in 2015, would you have guessed Sin Cara sword? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Well, I will wear the mask, and I will watch the Scooby-Doo WrestleMania special DVD that I own upstairs, though. So are you going to sign us off via sign language, then? Yes. 
Okay. Unfortunately, most of the people are listeners. So, uh, anyways. So quickly here. Mm-hmm. From one more from the chat room, Bobby F. J. Townlard. Kevin Owens will listen when you ask him to powerbomb John Cena to hell. There you go. Happy Kane Day. Happy Kane Day, everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, of course, WrestlingMayhemShow.com to check everything out. And uh, please email us at that email address, LB. Good time! Good job! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the shows, any Mayhem show, and everything else. Uh, check us out on all these social medias. Please subscribe to us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, YouTube. And we're posting the videos wherever we can on Facebook as well. Great Facebook group, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, where most of the conversation that we're having uh, is happening there. And it's a great place to be for a wrestling fan. Thank you, everybody, contributing out there. It means a lot. Check us out. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show to support this show yourself. And you get extra goodies. Uh, some Wrestling Mayhem Show gold as well as uh, uh, the State of the Mayhem and we're working on some other stuff as well for you guys giving a little bit and you can live a little bit more and there's a few uh, uh extra goodies on there for you too uh von johnson he's at philly.com the squared circle blog anything coming up yeah people should be looking out for um i have an interview uh some later this week with uh mauro ronaldo the uh play announcer for new japan pro wrestling on axe tv um i have my recap of triple h's uh uh, it was a press conference. Is a conference call from uh, Tuesday, uh, and yeah, you see it there. There's more thoughts on uh, the wonderful world of pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. Go check it out. Good stuff. Good interviews. And again, uh, check out that William Regal interview. That's up there too, right? Yeah, Re- Regal and Bailey uh, from this past week. Uh, really good reads. Really good reads. Check it out and follow him on Twitter. Uh, Vaughn, what was the middle number? Vittle, Vaughn M. M. Johnson on the Twitters. He, he's active. He's active there on Raw Night and everything alongside us. So uh, it's been good to see you on there. So uh, thanks a lot. I, I, I come back anytime. I, I hope you had fun. I did have fun. And whenever you guys want me back on, I'll be ready. Awesome. Awesome. We'll have to put you in a rotation. We'll have mainstream night every once in a while with you and Matt here. Uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, thanks, uh, uh, DJ Lunchbox. PanelRiot.com is his other project. Also, we started a little podcast that has finally settled into the DJ and the Sorg Morning Afternoon Power Hour. You can check that out at Sorgatron.com. It's just us having fun, having a conversation, right? Yeah, nice little nice little uplifting conversation to start your weekend. It is. It is. It's nice. We just kind of uh, brew some coffee on Saturday morning and and just have a, have a chat. Uh, Talk about what's making us happy. Eamon Payton over at InspireProWrestling.com. We got a great interview coming up at Indy Rest- Indy Mayhem Show. Damn it, it's getting late. Indy Mayhem Show. Uh, check out uh, everything going on there as well. Uh, Mad Mike at Mad Mike4883. He contributes on the uh, uh, Rambling Movie Minute. Is that it? Yes. And uh, usually, if you see anyone live tweeting Lucha or Impact, it's right. this guy. He's a big contributor. If you're arguing with him about what his thoughts on Impact Wrestling, that's him. I want to make yes. that clear. That's him, and this I'm the one. Me. I'm usually the one apologizing. my face. I'm usually the one apologizing <laughs> on Saturday morning about what I read from the night before. So, <laughs> but anyways, and of course, uh, mainstream Matt one t dot I got so much stuff going on at Sorgatron dot com, Sorgatron Media dot com. I think I got everybody. Thank you, everybody, for checking us out. We'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. Wait, just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.